Saturday Night Virus begins now. This is as disorganized as it comes. There it is. That's great. That's great. That's great. Hi. So you want to start to show you what's want to bring it down a little? Okay. All right. What's going on? It's uh, Bill Burr, Joe DeRosa. You're listening to Uninformed <laughs> on uh, December 22nd, sort of. This is a pre-recorded Christmas episode. Yeah. So, Jesus. For all we know, Joe, we're dead right now. I know. This studio could have uh, blown up. Wouldn't that be awesome if we died and you just said that and then yeah. people were listening to it? How great. It like what? a Tupac thing where they were like, fuck. Well, how they great would our ratings it. be? They really did one good. more show. They pre It was eerie. It was almost like they knew they were going to die. And on the special, they're showing the the zoom out of the black and whites of us. Dude, if we both died, shots. do you think we would even make it into into any newspaper? What newspaper and what page? I think... 40-something is what I'm thinking. My local paper from my neighborhood already did a cover story on me, so I think I would get at least a little... You get the front page. Something. What, what, on the, on your, your town paper? I got the front page of the weekend insert. For my local Dude, that's when paper. you know you're a complete failure, is if you die way too soon, and you came from a little shit-ass town, and they don't even have the decency to put you on the front page. Did you hear about Joe DeRosa? <laughs> oh my God, it was so tragic. He was driving down the turnpike. Wait, who? Huh? Who died? Uh, Joe DeRosa. Who is it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he's like, oh yeah, yeah, that guy, I remember him. I like how I broke character. Like, I didn't even know you were playing along. I'm like, what? Huh? I really am the worst. You'd be no good on Curb Your Enthusiasm, Bill. Hey, I'm not, I'm not like those improv guys. You, would, you wouldn't know what you know, to I'm do. a stand-up comedian. I need it all prepared. Oy, 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 I really oy, oy. do. Speaking of which, Bill Burr killing it on stage last night. Not last night. Not last two, two weeks ago. Two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> do the math. Fifteen days ago. Whatever the fuck it was. Yeah, it's I got to tell all, all, everybody who uh, showed up. Jesus Christ, I hope I uh, do that well the rest of the weekend. But uh, <laughs> no, nah, man, I, I had a great time. Two weekends ago <laughs> on uh, on stage. I really was. You know what's funny, uh, Danny? Uh, Joe came out uh, on, uh, what was it, Friday night? Friday. Friday. He comes out the first show. It was so hilarious. Like, uh, Doug Signe is opening for me. So Doug literally goes up, does his five minutes, and uh, he the, the time it takes him to bring Joe up and just walk to the green room, which is literally like, what, like a 16-second walk? Yeah. Doug comes walking in, and I'm like, yeah, hey, Doug, how's the crowd? He's like, uh He's like, oh, yeah, they're pretty good. And then you just hear Joe go, you're a fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> he's screaming. I thought he was literally yelling at somebody in the crowd. And I ran out there like thinking like, how did he get that? What did the person say? How did he get that mad that quick? And it just turned out he was just doing a joke. <laughs> but he was so loud. The first show, he was just screaming all his jokes. <laughs> We figured out, Billy and I talked about this last night, and you said, and it's true, if you're, as a comic, if you're in the city for too long, like you said. Like how long? You, 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 six I've been, weeks A straight. month and a half I've been here. I've been on the road in a month and a half. I'm going on the road next week. I can't wait. But, uh, uh, or excuse me, I'm going on, a, on the road a week ago. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and how did that work out, Joe? Uh, you feel a lot more relaxed? Strangely enough, I can't remember a thing about the gig <laughs> right now. The... Uh, but uh, you, I've been in the city, yeah, it's about six weeks, six, seven weeks, and you get so fucking wound up, dude, and you're, you're doing, like, every night. Like, on a Monday night, I did three shows this week, and it's just like, yeah, yeah. You're, 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 you're overworked. You just get crazy. You just got to, you're like, I got to get up, I got to kill, I got to get up, I gotta, you know, and you, you just go nuts, yeah. man. You don't settle into so anything. So he, he goes up there, and he's just, you know, it's like an 8 o'clock crowd Friday, so they're already a little more conservative. You know, the 8 o'clock crowd, they want to get home so they can go to sleep afterwards and he's just up there just screaming at them so i told i actually gave him like gave him the halftime speech i'm like dude you, uh, you're yelling at him and he thought i was just breaking breaking his balls but uh he went up there and then the next show he was relaxed and and he totally got him they really liked him and then when he yelled it had the power and he was so amped up that he was doing so well that he actually went overly nice like when he outro his show he's like hey thanks a lot you guys are great have a nice holiday everybody get home safe <laughs> <laughs> Don't go swimming 15 minutes after you eat. He, he, just, he just went like overly, overly we're, positive. Weren't you telling me the other day, though, that uh, that Joe had went on some like anti-religion tirade opening for you? 
Yeah, I actually, I. Oh, it was man. Thursday night. <laughs> Dude, was it was Thursday. he. Yeah, he's like, yeah, Thursday. But wait. he's ending his show. He, he's doing a joke. There was a point behind it, but it was just like I mean, I don't want to do your bit to to, to ruin, but he was basically. I'll do my bit. Okay, I'll do the bit. There's, there's a can, point. Can to you it. please do it at the volume that you were doing it at? The way I do it is I tell a Jesus joke, right, and then that people groan. The crowd either groans or laughs. So depending on what they react, how they react, I'll either go. I'm glad you guys laugh because people usually say you can't make fun of Jesus. Or if they groan, I'll go, why are you groaning? You can't make fun of Jesus? And I go, F fuck you. Fuck Jesus, right? And then they usually groan. And I go, fuck Jesus. Je fuck, Jesus can suck my dick. What's he? Fuck Jesus up his ass. Now just you know? picture him doing all this, but screaming. Right. And not even aware that he's yelling. I, I yell at the ceiling. You know, if you're so powerful, come down here and do something about it, bitch. Fuck you, Jesus. You're, you're a pussy. Whatever, whatever, blah, 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 whatever. And then the crowd groans. <laughs> so you see the comedy, but right? But then I go, but here's the point of it. Then I go, I go, do you feel how tense it is in here right now? It's very tense. And then I go, watch this. Fuck Muhammad. Nobody gives a shit. Fuck Buddha. Nobody cares. Fuck Allah. And then I go through all the other religions. And that's the funny part of it. That's when people start laughing like, oh, I get it. Like, But he's standing there it's like. It's the taboo of his, one guy versus not taboo of all the other guys. In his know? head, he's being conversational. So he's got like his, his body language is that he's conversational. But he's up there screaming, you know, fuck Buddha. Fuck a lot. Fuck him in the ass. <laughs> See? It doesn't make a difference. <laughs> he was just... I do. The second you were like that, I'm like, Joe is a louder guy, but he's never this loud. I knew it because <laughs> I get in those modes, man, where if, I, if I'm like, if I'm doing the road too much, yeah. I go, I call it robot mode. And I just get up there and I'm just trapped in my act and I hate my act. And I'm just like, I'm like a blown speaker when I'm up there. I'm just, I'm just screaming my stuff. <sighs> but I got to tell you, Joe. It, yeah. Two weeks ago, you were very. Uh, <laughs> no, man, you actually were. Uh, you were. You were, you, were, you were borderline pleasant. Well, dude, I was when I got back from my last trip on the road. That's how I was. Like I was very calm and I was very pleasant. I was smiling and very relaxed. And you wore a sweater, feeling good. Yes, I wore a sweater, <laughs> maybe even a collared shirt under it. You know, I didn't care. I felt good, and uh, and then. Uh, you know, you just get so goddamn tense over the course of the, you know, six weeks in the city. So, you know, I was glad you said that to me. It brought me back. It reeled me back in. And I was like, oh, yeah, he's right. Because I caught myself the other night. I was at I was at the Laugh Factory. I got to be honest with you. I was Joe. just screaming in the middle of my act. I'm like, what the fuck am I screaming about right now? Well, half of it is because I like you. The other half was I really didn't want to sit in the green room and listen to you scream all weekend. <laughs> you know, fuck Jesus. <laughs> It'll be it'll be good by the time uh, if that Dallas thing works out. I'll be uh... dude. It did work out. Come on, man. Let's just, let's just play along. There's plenty of truckers who just tuned in. Let's just act like it really is December twenty second. Well, Dallas wouldn't. Are be you so... fanning yourself? It really yeah, is hot it's in here. Hot in here. What, what's going on? Unfortunately, there's nothing I could do about that. Wow, we just have no budget on the show, do we? Nothing. There's Danny, nothing you can do. There's Danny not even a vent. Can make nothing happen. If I if I even try to touch the thermostat, I will I will get shit for it on Monday. Okay. And we were going to order pizza, too, which will add to the heat in here. So let's go with something I'm, else. Want to order a fruit cup, Joe? I, uh, you know, I want to order a new producer, Bill. How about that? Somebody Ooh, that can get things done. Can you imagine <laughs> saying that three days before Christmas? All right, you know, I'll, I'll be back here uh, at 9 o'clock for when I have to be live. So uh, have fun, guys. Uh, <laughs> come on. Joe DeRosa biting the hand that feeds. Was that too mean? I was huh? just joking. You was know what, mean? Joe? I can give you this. At least you didn't yell it. I thought you... <laughs> Thank God for that I trip you were to Dallas that deck. you haven't taken yet. And then you're going to jump on deck. Oh. No, you know why? Because I noticed I was kind of fucking with him in the lobby. Because, you know. He looked mad in the he lobby. He didn't look. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I did kind of one of these exaggerated, like, uh, where the hell you been, Danny? Because we were kind of waiting for him for a few minutes. And there wasn't even an ounce of he smile. Smirk, so I was just like, all right. And when he walked in, I went, well, well, well. And he just was like. We got nothing. We got nothing from you, Danny. Just, no, you know what? I was just, I was just, the traffic had really pissed me off. And like, I just what. Usually I'm in, you know, a fuck around mood all the time. I was just, I just did actually not that's not true. Around. The last couple of times we've started this show, you were screaming at that fat Asian woman. Remember well, that? Uh, well, On she the was side black. of the road, well, she was fucking black. Because she's spot. a cunt. She was a cunt. She still is a cunt. <laughs> I hope she's in pieces somewhere. Right? You know now. what? I think that's what got Joe yelling on stage. That confrontation. You haven't been out of the city since no, then, right? No, no. That's no. what started it. No, that really, I was really getting balled up around that that period, and I don't think it stopped until last night. Zero to until sixty. Two weeks ago, excuse me. Joe DeRosa. I uh, I got a temper. What can I do? You know what's funny? You want to talk about temper? Um, Count to ten. I've been playing uh, Guitar Hero three, and I'm stuck on fucking. What are you laughing at? That wasn't I, that wasn't a shitty segue. It wasn't. No, no. I was just laughing. 
<laughs> at how horrible you are, Guitar Hero. Uh, oh, all right, all right. I thought you were making fun of me, like doing a bad segue. That no, wasn't a bad no, segue. No. I really just yeah, because I thought it went in nice and smooth, yeah. and now you've totally just blown it up. That, <laughs> I'm just that you delivered it. I'm just thinking about Joe just you know playing Guitar Hero naked on a leather couch, just screaming at his television. Dude, I get so mad at it, and the song I'm stuck on now is "Talk Dirty to Me" by Poison. So. <laughs> not only not isn't only, that like one of the first songs too? Yeah, <laughs> shut your mouth. Not only am I furious at the fucking game and I'm screaming at it, my neighbors are hearing talk dirty to me over, over and, and over again. They must think I'm the biggest <laughs> queer over there. <laughs> well, I'm sure my neighbors love me playing fucking rock band. It's a you know, it's like a it's a little plastic drum kit so, and with a kick paddle. So I'm, I'm you know, aside from playing the actual drums in my apartment, you know. I have now this. How accurate is kit. is? You must destroy on the drum kit. It must be easy if you already know how to play drums, right? <sighs> I played it's, that in the, in the store. I didn't like it. It's oh, it's interesting. I mean, it does it does teach you the basics. I mean, it's not going to teach you everything, but it, it it you know if you could if you could swing the game on expert, you you kind of know your way around a set. Do you think this this game is actually going to lead kids to actually learn how to play guitar? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's it's been. Uh, I saw an article the other day where. Uh, uh, Guitar instruction has actually been boosted by games like Guitar Hero. Oh, and that's good. Then I don't mind because I got to admit, dude, I, I've been trashing the game, just going like, "Why the hell don't you really just play real guitar?" But I, I actually saw in there like the fan, the fans booing you and, and sharing that. Actually, that's actually funny as hell to me. Yeah, yeah it's it, awesome. It, you know, how arrogant was that? I actually give it my approval. Really it's kind of, it's kind of nice dude. that you know, you know, younger kids find the inspiration through the video i mean because now at least they're not just playing video games and not playing real instruments like this is actually you know sparking some kind of creative interest i will say dude it, it is a, a, a very mind stimulating game like you know the concentration it takes and the hand-eye coordination you know yeah. levels to any play other game talk play. dirty to me over and over again well, the incorrectly is, it'd be easier to just play talk dirty to me on a real <laughs> fucking guitar than this what is that riff Dude, it's so hard on Isn't the game. Isn't it kind of repeated? Da, 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 uh, like two extra notes no, in the end? Oh, God. And you... There it is. There's a little slide, a couple of slides. Hey, Ricky Rocket. I think it'd be easier to play that on regular guitar. Than I said it, Joey... <laughs> get get that out. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Do you have to do that part? That uh what is it? C well, yeah, it's just a long note and then you whammy bar it to get your star looks power. like your masterpiece. <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's the one thing I don't like. I don't like how it's not like a man-sized guitar either. It's that little that little yeah. plastic thing. I will yeah. tell you what's funny is the commercial for Guitar Hero though, when Slash comes out of that person's body like the, you got like the nerd playing it the section the second like Slash Grabs that plastic hunk of shit. Just the way he holds it, it looks like a Les Paul. It's like it? instant credibility. Yeah, to the the, his, his whole stance, <laughs> just everything. Yeah, he, when I hold like, it, it looks like when uh, Phil Collins plays the tennis racket <laughs> in that Genesis video. <laughs> but I'll tell you something: about the, uh, the guitar that comes oh, with Rock Band reference. is actually it's a it's a pretty accurate replica of a Fender Strat. It's a three quarters size Fender Strat. It's just made of plastic, but actually yeah, it's pretty good. It's just, yeah. It's kind of like my car. It's like it's a hybrid. It's like three, it's a car, but it's like three quarters of a real car. But when you drive up, <laughs> you have a three quarters car. Three quarters of a car, dude. I'll tell you, I feel like such a douche buying one of those hybrids. I, I just found uh, the, they had the the the, uh, the car show in uh, in L. A. And uh, I was actually on the website checking out you know the new cars and stuff. Like in like within two or three years, like all like gas and oil cars are going to have like ninety percent less emissions, which is equal to a hybrid. Oh, really? if, if not better yeah basically they 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 could do it they're just like it's like a money thing until they get forced into doing it you know what i mean the That's water starts rising up corner, you know right. you have tornadoes in brooklyn they're like all right all right we'll work on the admissions <laughs> jesus christ it's not just us <laughs> what about all those cows fucking shitting out in the middle of the country that's my favorite new one that's that allegedly you know if you eat red meat that if you stop eating red meat this is another theory if you stop eating red meat that that is allegedly that like cows passing gas, just standing there, you know, you know, chewing whatever came up from their fifteenth stomach, right. and passing gas is evidently doing more damage to the ozone layer than some hack comic like me. So we like need me. to eat more red meat. No, yeah, wouldn't you think that? Yeah, we need to kill all these fucking cows. What the fuck are they talking about? They, I guess uh, if you don't eat red meat, they don't breed the cows anymore. Yeah, they won't breed. They won't breed the Dude, cows. What did red meat do? To somebody's mom or sister. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I know. dude. People I know. hate red meat. Yeah, Oprah said it was racist. Didn't that what happened? Wasn't Oprah raped by red meat when she was a kid? At least she got molested or something. 
<laughs> Remember that? And she pissed off all the ranchers in Texas. Here's she the thing. said it was racist? Dude, no, no, I'm joking. I'm oh, joking. Oh, I'm just oh. making fun of, you know, Oprah. <laughs> Being a person of color, she attacked it. That you know, I was picking the two hacky issues. No, Dude, I, I think fucking a, man. I think she was saying, you know, because she was going through a diet or something. She was saying, you know, I didn't eat it and I feel great. And you know, anything she says, you know, people go, uh, people go ape shit over. You know, she said, read this book. They all read it, and then you find out the guy's actually a drug addict and he made everything up. Red meat is the Larry the Cable guy of, <laughs> of the meat world. People just hate it for no good reason, and you're just sitting there going, I don't know. It's not. Uh, Dude, I got to miss something. Man. I, 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 I went, this. I went like no meat for like two weeks, right? Like I had like fish every other day, and I felt really light and I felt good. And then I went to the gym. And I tried to do like pull ups, and I could only do like, you know, I could usually bang out like six or seven before my face starts turning a disgusting beet red. And I, dude, I did like two, and I was like, <gasps> <laughs> so I was reading, I was really reading that, uh, like meat is actually, it's, it's a, like a pure protein. And if, if you just eat like vegetarian, that like they're not full protein. So you gotta like combine like beans with like a yeah. handful of tofu. And it's just like, you gotta be like a mathematician. So I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to get a steak. I love I'm it. I love it. I love red meat. I'm sick of it. I was watching... Uh, I even like the fake shit at McDonald's. I mean, what tastes it's better? It's great. Than... It's great. I was watching Larry, the Larry <laughs> Sanders show the other day. <laughs> you really should be like the anti-Subway guy, Joe. Instead of being like... <laughs> I want to be. That's just what I want to do. Like, Dude, it's great. It's great. One of my favorite commercials ever was that Burger King commercial where it starts like at like the Subway. It's like the fake Subway, whatever. And... Uh, the man leaves and he's like, I'm getting some man food. And then it's like all the men <laughs> marching with the whoppers. Like, this is man. I, I oh, love yeah, it. I, I was know, like, yes. You know, yes, I love, you know, I love too. Who was that guy who got, who got in trouble for uh, making a, a homophobic remark? He called somebody a fag or something like that on the show. One of, the, one of those stupid doctor shows that only chicks watch because oh, the guy looks good in scrubs. You know what I mean? Fuck that. Oh, he was, oh, it was celebrity Grey's Fit Anatomy, club, right? It was Grey's, Grey's Anatomy. Anatomy oh, yeah. Where the black guy called the gay guy a fag. He outed him in an interview, called him a faggot. And well, first of all, I, I love. I, I, I love how in the news they were just like he said a derogatory remark to a homosexual. It's like, dude, there's one. There's basically <laughs> one. He called him a. Fag. I guess oh, there's more. Whatever. But anyways, like I love how like that gets so paid attention to. Yet, so many commercials on TV use like homophobia. To like yeah. sell their product, oh, like uh, if, if you guys seen that commercial where they, they they got the new thing where they're trying to get people to just use like those those credit card things instead of using cash. Yeah, and they yeah, do, yeah, do yeah, the like commercial. The check card thing. Yeah, the check yeah. card thing, and they're showing people going through the line. They're going dum 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 dum, and everything's just so easy. Somehow it's easy. Like there's no, you need to re-enter your password. You know, I didn't get. Everyone's just going through, and it was like this Steelers. Everybody's buying Steeler paraphernalia on the way to the football game, like real men. And then in the middle, the right. guy who's using cash comes up. I think with like a tennis ball. Or like a high lie racket, and he literally, and he, and he, I'm sure to God, this is commercial, and he literally has like a pink sweater tied around his neck. Jesus and the whole Christ. subliminal thing is, if you use cash, you're half a fag. <laughs> right, what are you using cash? What do you want to blow somebody? <laughs> it's like they literally. Why don't you dr wipe the jizz off your lip with that cash? <laughs> yeah, with that little pink sweater you got, dude. It's so funny because you got this unbelievable technology that they that they're using now that they're tapping into order this bank in the middle of South Dakota, wherever the hell it is. And then the only way to sell it to us morons, because we're so full of, like, fast food, and we can't think is, <laughs> like... simple-minded. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we, can't, we can't go high concept here. We'll be like, well, if we don't have to use, you know, cash, we won't have to cut down as many trees. You use well, that was like the, Money, uh, you're gay. <laughs> yeah, you're gay. <laughs> I told you about that. We might have talked about this on the show even before. When I watched that documentary about burger restaurants across the country, and they went to that one in, like, Texas or something, and the guy's like, here's how you eat a burger here. You get ketchup, cheese... <laughs> Let's tell you how he goes. Some of them back easters come in. They want mayonnaise on their burger. We tell them that's for sissies. <laughs> sissies eat mayonnaise on the burger. You're like, all right, jeez. Yeah, but you know what it is great about that the argument. The second you you question a guy's sexuality, I don't. It always puts you on your heels. Like that day, Anthony was trashing me for driving the hybrid. I mean, I had to go. Not, like I just screamed about how he he only had three rims and he was missing a hubcap. <laughs> that's all I had. And I, and I was like, really, even though I did okay in the argument, I literally felt like I was on the ropes the whole time. Because at the end of the day, I had like a 1.6 cylinder car, <laughs> which is perfect for city driving. But, dude, I drove that thing out to Vegas and thing was cruising. I, I mean, I, I, I came there and back in like a tank and a quarter. It was insane. But like when you get to the mountainous areas, when we started going up the hill, 
Dude, my car was doing that. It's <laughs> going up, and I was going, what's wrong with my car? What the fuck is wrong with it? I thought, I thought like, like the engine, like, like the oil had come out of it, but it was, it was just a 1.6 liter yeah, Steve, going, going up 30 degrees. Steve gets really defensive when you bring up his car, too. Because he's got the same, you got a Prius? Yeah. Yeah, he, got the, he has the same car. So uh, I asked him, I remember one time I was like, yeah, those, those things, they don't go very fast, do they? And he was just like, what are you talking about? I did, I did 90 coming here right now. <laughs> like, he immediately had to go on the defensive. Like, all I meant was, like, I don't think that thing could hit, like, triple digits. That's all I you meant can't, by No, it. no, you can. You, you can definitely hit triple digits. But I'll tell you, if it, it basically, and it's not even, like, going up hills. It's like when we, we were going up mountains. There's like that little mountain range, you know, the, I don't know what the hell it is as you're going out to Vegas. And when we were going up that, the engine was definitely, yeah, it was bitching a little bit. It was bitching a lot. I'm not going to lie to you. People are so oh. defensive on like either side of that argument, right? You know what I mean? Like it's, there's never been so much tension when it comes to environmental arguments and, uh, you know, I guess partly because of, you know, what's been going on politically in the, in the country for the last eight years, whatever it's like, but People are on both sides. It's either like, you fucking faggot, you know, or it's like, fuck you, my car's as good as your car. You know what I mean? Like, people get so. Well, I like the fact that a lot of people it, think if I'm driving a hybrid that I'm saying what they're doing is wrong. It's like, I don't give a shit. Drive what you're going to drive. I just, you know, fly all over the place. Like I said, I put my own hole in the ozone layer, the amount I fly back and forth. So, um, I don't know. Plus, you know, there's it's because it's bumper the only to bumper one. traffic. And you know what? Like I said, I worked out outside out there, dude, one day in the afternoon after there had been a good rush hour. I literally tasted it. wasn't even dirt. It was like soot in my mouth. This Ew, was, from where? When I was in L.A., dude, it is absolutely filthy. So it's like, I, you know. Is it really? I've only been out there for a few days at a time. Like, is all that smog stuff really true? Like, there's just... Nah, like, Joe, oh, that's just some shit they make up for tourists. <laughs> <laughs> we just figured that'd be a good way to get people nah, to come I in there. I, I, know there's, <laughs> I know there's smog, but I'm saying, can you really, like, see it over the city and everything? I've never really... It's one of those... Like, if, noticed. You know, if, yeah, if you fly in, you can definitely see it. And, and it's like... It's just like fog, where if there was a, a dense fog, like, I couldn't see, you know, 40 feet away, but I could see you 10 feet away. See, it's not like there's smog in between... You and the person sitting across from you as you, <laughs> you, eat, as, as you, you eat, as, as you eat a tofu yeah, salad. Yeah, yeah. But you can see that around the city, too. Like, I mean, you drive, drive five miles out of Manhattan, and you, you can see, like, there's, like, a haze, you know? There's something about ca I California, I, I though. I never that, put it together that that's what the smog yeah, is. It's just, it's just you thought, thought those were brown clouds? I always thought it would look like at the end of Ghostbusters when there's that <laughs> cloud over the city. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought it would just look like foggy. <laughs> like, like a wormhole is going to open up yeah. over L.A.? Yeah, like when they open the arc. <laughs> <laughs> I actually went on the Internet. You can look this shit up. they got, like, the, the, the most dirtiest cities. And I think, like, the top 24 out of 25 are all Southern California cities. It's all like Bakersfield, Los Angeles, all of them. What are the health uh, uh, issues about living in a city like that? Oh, it definitely, it's like, it's an equivalent, I think, of like smoking a little bit. Jesus sort of re re recreational smoking. Yeah, so it's like, so how am I a dick if I'm buying a hybrid? I'm actually doing something to maybe knock it down a little bit, you know? Well, you're not a dick. The problem, the, the reason people get so And I'm not a fag either. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> the reason people get so t uh, testy about hybrids is because there aren't enough of them. If there were, you know, if it was half and half or... No, it isn't. People don't... You know, this, is, this is the bottom line. There's only a couple also, hybrids versus a few hundred auto or other regular And you know what it is? You know? There's, there's no hybrid out there that has balls. And that's the truth, man. There's, there's nothing out there that, like... If they could just somehow come up with, like, a hybrid or something like that where you could work on it like those, those grease monkeys in the 50s with those Fonzie haircuts and their cigarettes rolled up in that T-shirt. If you could somehow come up with like a, a car like that, then, then it would start getting respect. But there's no, there's no reason to respect anybody who drives a Prius. You need a, you need a good, <laughs> and I drive one, man. You need a good spokesman. You don't have any good... Larry David is the like main you know, face man for, for Prius because yeah. he, he drives on the show. And I love Larry David, but he's not going to get you the tough guy respect that you need. You need a... No. You need, like, Jesse Ventura. <laughs> and it, 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 and it just wouldn't fit. You can't have a tough guy. That's the funny a thing. Prius. Yeah, about a big guy getting out of a Prius. <laughs> it just uh, it just, uh, it doesn't work. It's like a big guy with a little dog. You yeah. see a big guy walking down the street, and he's got, like, one of those little Paris Hilton chihuahua things. He just... that, was, that was a weird thing I saw once. Uh, Lynn Coplitz was walking down the street with her tiny little, like, adorable dog in a sweater. Lynn, she probably looked famous. because she's Patrice... Already... Patrice was there and Patrice was like, "Hey, doggy!" <laughs> like being cute with the dog. It was the weirdest fucking thing. 
Because I thought he I was think just... I remember him saying a long time ago he likes those little dogs. He really had like a little soft spot for the dog. He's a gentle giant. I thought that was uh, yeah. Who the fuck was that? Our guest walking in. Who's, who's that? Some guy's going to murder us right now. He really had a Jeffrey Dahmer profile. <laughs> As he walks by. Who is this guy? I don't know. I don't oh, know. Starbucks. Oh, Starbucks. All right, Starbucks. we got nervous there. Just, just yell Starbucks next time you come in. You'll get a free plug. Okay. All right, man. <laughs> He's from Starbucks. So what else is going on? It's Christmas time. I'll tell you, yeah, Christmas time, and I've been getting, uh, I've been getting trashed every right. once in a while. Yeah, I, I like it, like I don't like getting trashed, believe me. But what I started to do is I started to, uh, I started to save my uh, emails of people trashing me. Danny, you're gonna love this one. This is the, how much of a psycho was this girl, right? Hang on, let me get this thing up. This girl basically she sent me an email, right? This is basically the over. I'm not going to read the whole thing. She wrote a really, like, three, four paragraph thing. She said, Bill, please come back and do a couple shows in Washington, D.C. I had every intention of seeing you at D.C. Improv when you were there in October, but I was on, on travel and my computer screwed up my return date. So I got back the 21st instead of the 19th. So I missed an opportunity to see you. Then I was in L.A., blah, blah, blah. Same thing happened. I really like you, you know, your comedy. So I left clues. I gave the CD to my family and friends, blah, 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 blah. This whole thing. Just saying how much she likes me and I she wanna, really wants to come and see me, right? I want to come see what she looks like. Hold on. No, no, no. I don't have a picture of her. It's not a MySpace. This is an oh, email. It's a thing. regular email. Yeah, so oh, she writes this really right. thing. Please come back to DC or somewhere close. I see you're going to be at Caroline's. I just may have to plan a weekend in New York to come see her, right? So that's a nice email. So I don't know. I was fucking busy. I didn't respond to it. And a week later, this is what she writes to me Why should anyone write you if you're not going to reply? You could have humored me with this short, I'll try, in quotes. Considering you're a court jester with lots, <laughs> <laughs> with, with lots of competition, and I will pay money to see you, a reply would be the way to keep your fan base from dwindling. I mean, from the looks of your schedule, you're not that busy to reply to an email. And then she totally flips and, be, and is like, I would still like to see you in D.C., and I still think you're funny, but a quick reply would be nice. You better pray this chick doesn't show up at a show, because <laughs> she will be the one that kills you. She'll kill you. She, that's the chick that'll shoot you because she's got a crush on Jodie Foster or some shit like that. I know. That. It's like, dude, she emailed me November 27th, and then I didn't get back to her, and it's like, you know, the 26th. I mean, not the 26th, uh, December 6th. She just fucking snaps on me. Yeah, you better, uh, that, she sounds like a psycho. Do you, you get a lot of that hate mail? Did yeah. you get a lot this year? I mean, I mean, obviously. You here's, get a, here's a classic one from, uh, this is one actually from a couple years ago. Remember that uh, when I said to that guy, uh, Danny, the janitor, when I yelled at the janitor? Oh, that was great. Yeah, which one of those keys? On, which one of the keys yeah, unlocked uh, your that dreams? Was when, uh, yeah, that was when we were doing that uh, that uh, street fishing on the uh, on the O and A show where we had all the stuff on the street. Yeah, they basically uh, Opie what came up with this bit to, to put a bunch of like creepy stuff on the sidewalk that got progressively more and more creepier, like a dirty magazine, and then uh, a, a you know gay guy uh, magazine, and then like a, just a big black dildo, and it just got <laughs> just to see who would pick, who would it, pick up. it up. People yeah. looking around it was early enough in the morning. So this janitor, was some of the stuff was out in front of this building, so he came up and he was picking it up. So Anthony started yelling at him with the megaphone, and the guy was yelling back. And it was kind of good-natured at first. Then the guy looked down the street. Now, this isn't part of his jurisdiction of sweeping up. And it was all the way down the street, and he walked down the street and picked everything up and destroyed the bit. So we started trashing, and then he gave us the finger. You know those, those janitors have like, like 100 keys on their, on their yep. hip? So I just yelled down. I said, hey, buddy, which one of those keys unlocks your dreams? Right? <laughs> right. So this guy ends up sending me an email. Hey, brother, just wanted... The janitor did? No. Uh, some, so, somebody right, listening right, whose right. uncle's a janitor. I don't know what. <laughs> he goes, hey, brother, just wanted to think... Well, just wanted to say I think you ain't funny. You're actually pretty lame. You look like a mongoloid cocksucker. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. I saw that video clip where you were swearing at the janitor picking up the porn T-shirt. Seriously, that was fucking lame. I saw most of the video clips on your site. They're all fucking... They all fucking suck ass as well. Anyways, I guess guys like you were too dumb to do anything else with their lives, so they had to go out and make jokes so people can't, can laugh at them. I hope you feel dignifi dignified when you sleep at night, you dumb fuck. You know how much they pay you, but I wouldn't give a nickel to perf to get, I wouldn't give you a nickel to perform in any of my any of my parties. Fuck off. And he spelt he spelt the f word with ph the entire time. Really? Yeah. So I don't know if that gives him some sort of urban credibility. Jesus Christ, dude. What no, a fucking I, asshole. I got bad reviews on that one. I used to like you, then you made fun of that poor janitor just doing his job. Shame. With an exclamation point. Shame. <laughs>
I got hate mail from one girl this year about something I put on my MySpace about how I didn't like hippies. And she wrote me this long fucking message about like... Was it patchouli scented? Yeah. Like about you're closed minded and and uh, you're an asshole and, and why would you put this sort of thing out there and it's bad energy and all this stuff. So I just I wrote back to her. I go, hey, sweetie, you know. I know you have this cute uh, utopian concept of what MySpace should be, but some of us grown-ups use it to publicize our c careers, you know, and uh, actually put bits and things that we've written onto it. So right. sorry you don't like them, but whatever. So then she wrote me back and trashed me some more, and then I wrote her back and trashed her some more, and then she writes back, obviously we're not going to see eye to eye, so let's just drop it. And it was like, fuck you, cunt. You fucking <laughs> started it with me. You came up and you were the one poking me in the fucking forehead trying to get a rise out of me, and then when I respond to it and tell you what I think, then it's like, oh, let's just drop it. Don't be out of line here with well, me. That's the funny thing about the Internet is, is like, back off. in the day, if you thought somebody sucked, you just kind of yelled it at the TV and your friend and you trashed them. Now you can actually email the person. You can Google them. You can get them. And if you're a guy like me, like, I only get, like, other than, like, I get, like, a ton, I get, like, 700 <laughs> spam, but as far as, like, legitimate emails, I probably only get, like, I, I get, like, under 20 MySpace you know what? legitimate emails a day. So I read all of them. You know what days are over? The, uh, this sucks that we never get to experience, like, the thing, like, that guys like Elvis got to go through where you go into your office you know, on the bag of, of the fan week. mail. Yeah. What's on the agenda? The assistant. You got a meeting with uh, the so -and -so at eleven, twelve o'clock lunch with the president, and uh, you got your fan mail. <laughs> it's piling up. I fucking... had sprayed with perfume. <laughs> Big kiss to seal it. Yeah, some chicks mailing you period blood. <laughs> People are sending you locks of their hair. All kinds of shit. That's over, dude. You don't get anything. That's all electronic bullshit now. Ah, this business stinks. Let's quit. Let's yeah, but you out. know something else? You also couldn't go, go on there and, and, you know, with a webcam and tell her to take her clothes off and see it live <laughs> and pleasure yourself. Yeah, I know. What you have to do, Joe, you got to embrace the new technology. Those were the old what, days. What, do you want to have Colonel Parker as your, your manager? Yeah, yeah. Was he, was he the same guy who did the KFC commercial? Yes. It was, it was the same guy, right? He went by Colonel Sanders on those, but, it's, yeah. but it, it was, in fact, the same A lot guy. of people don't know that. You know, that thing, like, he funneled all that money that he stole from Elvis and started the uh, the KFC chains. Which is one of the reasons he went under yeah. Colonel Sanders. And was... he grew the goatees, yeah, so they yeah. couldn't recognize him. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? And Elvis was so popped up on pills that he he didn't even recognize. <laughs> they just kept feeding him and those... he used to eat those... the chicken. Yeah. Well, like, you know, he kept, they kept doing the peanut butter and banana sandwiches. They, they, they'd send him that route. And it was completely off his radar. It was in Kentucky. He lived in Tennessee. You know, but no, he would sucked. eat the chicken. That was one of the hilarious things about how messed up Elvis was at the end of his life, is that he would actually eat the chicken, not realizing it was the guy that fucked him out of all right. the money. Now, have you ever seen that conspiracy theory that that's what killed him? The chicken? Yeah, like he couldn't make any more hit records, so he just kept feeding him that chicken, and he, he died on the, on the uh, toilet bowl. Because they knew once he died that all these white trash people would want to walk through his living room and buy, like, the cuckoo clocks. Of him when he's in shape. I want to buy like an Elvis, like when he, the fat Elvis cuckoo clock with, <laughs> with the legs are too big. So you have to keep resetting it because the second, <laughs> the second hand doesn't work. Is that a real thing? What, the Elvis cuckoo clock? Yeah. You never seen that? No. They have it. It's like he's got his hands like sort of like in the middle oh, of him doing a thing, shimmy. Yeah. Oh, Everybody yeah, has yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Where his legs are like the pendulum. Yeah. Sort of, you know, and there's like one. white trash people have it and then douchebags. There's like no middle ground. You know yeah, what I mean? It's either, it's, you're either white trash or you live on 5th and A. Yeah, you're like some <laughs> hipster. Yeah. I just like the Elvis clock. Cause I was here yeah, I hear people do that. Oh, they get like, Elvis, a, like, uh, like uh, velour paintings and like bullfighting and shit. You know uh, what I mean? Eat me. That's what, Danny, that's what he has. Joe They're has. cool paintings. He has velour, velour <laughs> paintings of, of bullfighters. I have two of them. They look cool, and I get a lot of compliments on them. They're very cool. Do you have the, the dogs playing poker, too? No, I don't, Danny. Yeah, he, he has the quintessential. <laughs> I'm a bachelor. <laughs> it's a cool painting. You had nothing in that apartment when I moved in there. You had nothing. What are you yeah, talking about? You had nothing. That's not true. <laughs> yeah. I had some of the worst. You had that. Fu you had hotel art. He literally had hotel room art on the fucking yeah. walls. I moved in and I go, dude, can I please take these pictures down? They were like watercolor paintings of like metals no, with they a lake. No, and no, shit. they actually was... they actually weren't. I'll tell you what that one was. That was an awful picture that my mom got me when she went to Martha's Vineyard. My mother's. She really likes. Uh, who's that? Who's that? That cunt up in Connecticut who had to go to jail. <laughs> oh, Martha Stewart. <laughs> yeah, Martha Stewart. Right. She loves her and her whole vibe. Right. Martha Stewart owns Martha's Vineyard. Right. 
That's where that's I just named Martha's Vineyard. Yeah. All right. She's on a yeah. She's on the the okay. path to buy uh, Nantucket. Okay. Um, Joe with the geography, huh? Good point. Um, so she really she really likes that whole vibe, like that whole Martha Stewart sort of vibe. So the you can only imagine like the painting she bought me, like you know. You know, like, you know, the, the snooty sort of, it's like, you yeah, know, it was, it, it was hideous and I hated it, but she gave it to me. So I, so it, when I was leaving, I had all these awful, my parents just kept buying me pictures and I, you know, by the end I had like 30 pictures. I'm like, I, I live in a one bedroom apartment. You got to stop buying me this you horrific. You them all now. I got a whole fucking closet. So I left the worst, pictures. the worst, because I can't throw them out because my mom gave it to me. It's like bad karma, right? So I literally leave it right over his, right over the bed. How long did that painting stay Every up there before you took that thing down? An hour. An hour. I don't even think I had my furniture moved in yet. <laughs> you know what picture I wanted to go on that wall instead was a, a close-up of your face when you actually looked at that painting. That should be the picture that's hanging over your bed. And then you left the uh, the pictures from your special. Every time you're in town, I inherit a couple a couple new frame pictures that I can't hang on the walls. What the, pictures? You, oh, you yeah. The oh, yeah, special. yeah. And they're actually cool, but it's like, what am I going to do? What kind of a fucking douche would I look like if I had your... Special things hanging. I up. forgot. I got it. I, I got it. Yeah, I got to bring those. Stand poster. I got to bring those back at some point. <laughs> Leave them there. I don't go fuck. Yeah. I what am I supposed closet. to do? How the fuck am I? You can't take a painting on an airplane. I don't need that closet yet. I don't know. You know what? Let, let's take a break and I need to get some water, dude. It's like ninety degrees in yeah, here. Yeah, I'm Daddy. sweating, man. Yeah. Hey, Danny, can you go play thermostat hero? Yeah. <laughs> Over there. How about, how about you outro a little more Christmas music here? Okay. Maybe it'll cool up the studio a little bit. All right, we'll play some Gary Hoey. A uh, little Frosty the Snowman, something. It's the Christmas episode. The Christmas episode of Uninformed. Bill Burr, Joe DeRosa, informing you on some stuff you didn't know, like that Colonel Parker stuff and uh, that stuff about Martha's Vineyard. Uh, that's it, man. Keep it here. Uninformed with Bill Burr and Joe DeRosa. All right, what's up, everybody? We're back here on uh, Uninformed. Bill Burr, Joe DeRosa. Joe has uh, issues with the way I went to break, and news, I, I don't. Bill. I don't think I can. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I can defend myself. Good news. I think. I think all the listener, the listeners, kept it here. I, think I can't. Yeah. Who are you, Casey Kasem? You <laughs> fucking douche. <laughs> Keep it here, folks. Don't change that dial. Dude, it started happening on last month's episode where I just lost the ability to be able to go to break. I used to just say, all right, you listen to Uninform, Bill Burr, Joe DeRosa. Oh, my That's God. That's it. And I, I, all of a sudden now I'm like, uh, thanks for listening. Hey, keep it here. You fucking center square <laughs> announcer hack. <laughs> Shadow Stevens. Uh, yeah. uh, you got a lot us, of folks. issues with me. You also, what I found out is... Uh, a year ago, for people who've actually been listening to this show for a year, a uh, year ago you had your holiday party, and uh, I well, ended up getting into this argument with a friend of yours. It was a Super Bowl party. When was the Super Bowl? Super Bowl. The Joe, the Joe, the non-sports fan. Yeah, first week of February. All right, so last well, almost a year. Uh, yeah, my best friend that I grew up with, Scott, uh, and Bill is. Yeah, I'd, Bill, I'd, I'd go as far as to say you're my best friend in comedy, if I may say so. All right, if I may say as much. So you got your two best buddies. You gonna uh, put that on your bio? There, <laughs> the uh, <laughs> mention in Bill Burr's liner notes in his CD. I was touched by that, by the way. Yeah, I know. You Thank know what's you. funny was the fact that you told me he was Danny. He was reading my CD and saw that I gave him, uh, you know, whatever in the in the liner notes. I said, "What's up to him?" I gave him special thanks or whatever, and he started telling me how touched he was in in the green room, and I I just gave him nothing. He didn't. He made me feel like a fucking <laughs> asshole. Joe, that's how I grew up. I'm if, like, if if uh, you're looking for affection, I, I can't give it to you. And even put the cute, like, little inside joke. It's a Joe underscore DeRosa because of what I say on my voicemail. Dude, you he know? has the longest. And I was like, oh, dude, I'm touched by that, you know? And he's like, yeah, uh, I got to go on stage, Joe. So uh, just to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I also want to help. He wasn't, he was running bits by me. Like, that's one of the number one things you don't do. Comic to comic, you don't, you know. Go up to somebody and just be... You know, every once in a while, I go, hey, what do you think about this? I did that with uh, Jay and Kurt he, all the time. We always do that. Dude, you were running a chunk of material by me. Yes, he I just was. kept going, what do you think about this? Yeah. <laughs> you ever, uh, this is funny. No, no. And he had this big, goofy smile because he was all excited about his new joke. Hey, he's gonna, you ever been clipping your hedges? <laughs> 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 
Half the smile was knowing how annoyed you were at it. It was making me laugh. No, and you just kept doing. You know that thing where you don't. Want it, sometimes you just don't want to be a dick. So you just the only way to do it at that point is you just have to sit there and stare at the carpet and hope that they they understand that the complete lack of eye contact means I really don't want. I wanna... fully understood it, which is okay. why I had no intention of stopping it. Here's the deal, though. You guys got. I like how you just turned that around. I did turn it around. Yeah, uh, you did. You guys were playing at my Super Bowl party. You got you and Scott were playing beer pong, some sort of discrepancy. That's excuse me, dispute is the word I'm looking for. I vaguely remember Broke something out. happened. Something I was happened. winning. We started talking trash, and then all of a sudden, it. Uh, a lot of I tension. I, yeah, I thought he was being passive aggressive. I called him on it, and next thing you know, middle of your Super Bowl party, there was tension. Now. Of course, his side of the story is we were just kidding around, and he all of a sudden he started snapping at me. I don't know what the fuck happened. So there's two different sides of the story. The point is, dude, if this I'm thing a, ends with I'm a psycho again, I'm really getting not, tired of it. No, One of these times it's, I it's, have to be fucking Jesus, right. Jesus, it's not ending with you're a psycho. All right. I'm just saying he, these are the two sides of the argument. But the bottom well, line is. Well, I already know is, he's one of your childhood friends, so you go all the way back to when you were, like, and, shooting frogs and with and slingshots. Up. All I want are my friends from my professional life, my friends from my personal life to get along. These are close people that I care about very dearly, and uh, it's Christmas. Ugh. I'd like to see the two of you make up. I want to choke you with a Christmas sweater right now. I'd like now. to see the two <laughs> of you make up. wrap the sleeves right around your neck. I'd like to see the two of you make up for Christmas. Right. For Christmas. But you see how defensive I'm getting? This yeah, is what this is how this, 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 this is how I get when anybody's looking for some so sort of good feeling. Hey, could you could you give us a little mood music underneath this maybe if we could uh as we go to do this? This is Scott will be on the air in a moment here. He's called let me, in let me put him on for you guys. From Pennsylvania. Okay. And uh is he on the air? Scott, what's up, man? Hello, how are you? I was like, oh, geez, I'm going to lose this. Listen how nice he sounds now that I'm sober. <laughs> Hello, how are you? He you sounds guys, like he, he does, like, life insurance. You guys are not here to argue. You're here to make amends, please, for Christmas. I don't think there really is that much of an argument to begin with. Oh, my. This is the guy I got in an argument with. Yeah, he's such a nice fella. <laughs> See how nice he sounds? Dude, I thought you would be, we were playing beer pong. I thought you were getting a little passive-aggressive. You were, uh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what happened. I mean, whatever. We had like 19 Keystone lights, and uh, <laughs> well, because you never played beer pong with a good beer, you know what I mean? Here's my here's my minor recollection of the evening. Oh, well, there you go. What is it making up on the little rascals? <laughs> my, here's my perception of it from uh, actually being there that night. Uh, I thought we were playing beer pong. I thought that you were winning and talking some trash. Uh, I started to talk some trash and eventually won, and then you got furious at me, and I thought you were a complete dickhead. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Dude, you didn't win. I won, and that's what was what pissing you off. I think oh, that's right, and I was angry because you thought you won and danced around like you won. <laughs> In reality, the game was over. I think I remember that happening. I remember you going, yeah, yeah, you did, you fucking cheated. You fucking cheated. Yeah, he had, this, he had some douchey rule. Yeah, he had some sort of douchey rule. That's exactly it. Here was the douchey rule, Joe. When the ball goes in the cup, you're supposed to drink it. <laughs> no, that wasn't it. No, nah, that wasn't Look it. Look at nah, Scott nah. coming out swinging. I wasn't nah, expecting nah, nah, this nah, today. Nah. Well, you know what it is? I don't even remember it because it was like, it was a fight over beer pong. <laughs> so it was like nine months later. He, he has like fucking, he's got like a stenographer reading back dialogue. <laughs> From this fucking Super He's got Bowl party. little receipt yeah. with all the text on it. I don't remember. But you see what I'm saying about him being passive aggressive? He came on all fucking nice, then he goes blaze, and that's what I'm talking about. All he tries right. he tries to play that nice. He's trying to play he's trying to play this this this, this nice thing. <laughs> see that? He's a cunt. He's a cunt. Go fuck yourself. I hope you don't get what you want for Christmas. There you go, dude. I'm never gonna be friends with this guy. There you go, Joe. Your 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 professional friends and your personal friends, you you're gonna have to draw a line. <laughs> You, you got, you you're gonna have to draw a line. Let me let me say the second half of what I was gonna say is, my perception after that night was that I got way over the line and were treating you as if you were someone I knew since birth, and I absolutely shouldn't have said and been as familiar and comfortable with you. You, you as don't I see was, the style here. And I could definitely be perceived as being the nice, not nice. He, he does really good. He, he does. He does good cop, bad cop. Good cop, bad cop. Good cop, bad cop. He said he felt really bad about it. Nah, I did feel no. really He's just bad giving about it. it. He's saying this is how I felt nah. that night, and then this is how I felt after, and you know, he's he's doing the, he's doing the, the John Kerry right now. He's waffling. Masterfully. Yeah, he came on nice. Then he's a cunt. Now he's doing the nice thing. Yeah, not masterfully because I'm not buying it. Scott, this is. I don't really. Scott, I really. Obviously, I don't have any bad feelings towards you. Whatever. We were both drunk. I, I, it was it was fucking beer pong, you know. You gotta you gotta understand something. I, you're actually you're I don't, but hero. you can you can present what you want me to understand. <laughs> he just said you were his hero. Listen to what he's gonna say. <laughs> Finally, 
someone this is a else setup. has to take care of Joe besides me. It's really <laughs> a gift and a treat. I mean, somebody, you know, how Joe whiny, Joe like how, how? We're completely frayed. He couldn't hang on to those anymore. So we got you now. And I'm thrilled. I'm Scott, thrilled let me ask you a question. When Joe was growing up, like how many days of the week did you just see him just crying? I just, Joe always just pictures me as a kid, like coming home from school and somebody had been flicking his ear all day. And he was already, like, whimpering as he came up the driveway. <laughs> What's the matter, Joe? I don't want to talk about it, Ma! Can, can, I, can I say last names? I'll just, can I, I'll just say first names. Yeah, just yeah, say yeah. first names. There was a guy in our neighborhood. His name was Roger. Yes. And uh, Roger, Roger was kind of like the neighborhood bully, but, uh, and, and, you know, kind of an asshole. But, but he hated Joe. Now, Joe has, you know, the physical prowess of Gumby. You know, he has, like, no... There's something about Joe makes you want to pick on him, though. I, I got to... Defend the I've bully heard that a little for bit. Years. Yeah, Joe, I've you, heard that you for just, years. It's your body language. So one day we're all we're sledding. Just or throw something. A pizza at it's you. It's a snowy day, <laughs> and Joe comes running out of nowhere, screaming, and Roger's chasing after him, and he's screaming, 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 <laughs> and he falls down, and Roger just gets on top of him and is just throwing snow in his face, <laughs> down his pants, <laughs> all over the freaking place. I mean, it is unbelievable. And but what is Joe running. doing? Flailing? Oh, he, yeah, he does his, his normal defense, which is the worm, when he just, like, slugs <laughs> down in the ground in, you know, fetal position. <laughs> and uh, and then, so, so then he, like, he, finally Roger leaves. He, Joe gets up, he's like, there's snow in my ear. I can't hear the snow in my ear. <laughs> and he's, like, screaming and crying and the whole bit. And when Roger gets about 100 yards away and Joe's done crying and whimpering, <laughs> Joe just goes, and we're like 10 years old. Fuck you! Screams <laughs> <laughs> across the stage and runs into his own house because he lives right next door. And now we're all standing out there for the bully to beat up. <laughs> oh, did he, did, did he come back and attack you guys? Oh, of course. Yeah. Don't forget the part of the story where I went inside and got my mom to come to the upstairs window and yell at him <laughs> for me because right. I, I was too scared. That. Wow, that's got to be a real bad feeling as a parent. That you realize that your kid is that kid, the kid who gets show. Well, not like, if you're the I, mom. If you're the mom, you're like, I got to protect my baby. If you're the dad, you're like, what the fuck is wrong with it? You? you know what I mean? Yeah. The mom doesn't care. But I was always that guy. I'm still that guy, dude. That's like the same story. I that think happened. the mom does care on some level, like some sort of reverse Oedipus thing. Like they want to mate with the strong male, and you're coming home like the runt of the litter. <laughs> the dog with like a chewed up ear. That's the uh, that's basically the same story of what happened in that bar a month ago when my friend Jim was in town. Yeah, you do. You still I'm, do I'm, it. I'm 20 feet away from the big scary dude in the room, and I'm going, "Fuck you! What are you gonna do about it? Nothing. Walk away." You know, like yeah, he's saying this shit, Danny. As he as he as he backs up. No, Joe. You know people. You know, can you walk gum and can you walk and chew gum at the same time? Joe can talk shit as he backs out of a room. <laughs> Joe talks the best shit when there's at least 30 females in between him and the other uh, alpha male that I'm he's, that he's, at that he's I'm yelling a great at. shit talker. Joe's done a thing, a similar situation to that bar situation where there was this huge dude in a video store years ago. Oh. We went to return this video, and I don't know, somebody bumped into him. No, wait a minute. Wait, don't fuck this story up, dude. This is... Hey, I, can you let our guest speak, Joe? Stop interrupting. But, I was really but, into this story. No, I'm, I, but Scott, what happened was they were fucking with us outside of the video store. Oh, wow. Well, that really helps the punchline. <laughs> no, they, were, they were fucking with us outside of the video store. They they drove their car at us like they were going to hit us, and it was a pickup truck, and they're That's all hanging right. out the pickup truck, and they're all giving us the finger. So we, <laughs> we go into the store. Joe, don't you see? This is, it, and it's because of you. You like you know when they blame I'm, I'm the, the rape cooler. They, they 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 blame like the rape victim like well what were you wearing it's just <laughs> something about you probably had like mittens on <laughs> some big winter jacket Dude, you want to talk about terror and fucking action we walk into the video store and I start trashing these guys right because we're the only people in the video store and I go fuck them and they're fucking they're wearing cowboy hats and they're fucking cowboy fucking little pussy yeah because should be a clue right? never to ever talk back to someone if they're wearing a cowboy hat but but. Uh, that's the thing. They weren't there, so I was just running my mouth. Which is to, when you're your bravest. Yeah, all of a Scott, sudden. Scott, right? That's right. Next thing we know, the door opens. They all walk in, and he's like, oh, shit, dude. Watch what you're saying. They're in here, right? 
they walk up to the fucking clerk. The clerk is their boy, and the clerk oh. starts telling them everything I said. Can you? T and they they're like, all right, motherfucker, we'll see you outside. And they just stood outside and waited for us. That's right. And Scott still. That was the funniest part was watching you walk up with Ace Ventura when nature calls, <laughs> and still paying the fee and renting it. But that's the craziest part, Joe. Remember, the craziest part was we got into the car, we sped away. We get all the way home, and we're like, holy shit, thank God we got out of that. And I realized I left my receipt, and that was from that place, uh, like video update, where the receipt had your home address on it. <laughs> yeah. And I left the, the, the receipt sitting right on the Dude, floor. that's the true <laughs> romance. And your son, fuckhead that he is, <laughs> left his driver's license. Oh, <laughs> uh, shit. Yeah. This yeah. is great. This is what I was hoping would happen for Christmas, which is the two of you make up by shitting all over me. I kind of had a feeling it would go that route, and I'm glad it did. Well, let me ask, let me ask you, Joe, what, what, what is it about, like, you, you want all areas of your life to mesh together? Uh, probably the abandonment that I <laughs> suffered as a child. And, and uh, for first-time listeners of Uninformed, what, what happened again? I was adopted at a young age. I have a lot of uh, subconscious uh, things like, going on with that. Do you that remember when they, when, they, when they left you in, in the, uh, at Ellis Dumpster. Island? <laughs> yeah, I remember dropping how old, how into old the trash you, can at the How prom. old were you when your original parents were just like, you know, I'm just not feeling it? I thought, just, my, my, re, my parents that I have now adopted me at nine days. So, Oh, at nine days? Yeah, dude, this was... See how annoying you are, Joe? I mean, they, your real parents couldn't even last ten days. This was you. clearly a case of two immigrants fucking up and being like, shit, we got to get rid of this thing. Thank God they didn't, you know, do what do you what, what do you think would have happened if they kept you? I'd probably be living in some goddamn dingy fucking market selling apples. <laughs> you'd, be, right you'd be bilingual? Yeah, I'd have a little monkey on my shoulder dressed up like Aladdin <laughs> that has to go steal me dinner every night. <laughs> <laughs> Eating mystery meat every night. Joe would have been a cab driver. Yeah, you know what? It's so funny that you just said that because I was picturing Joe. Mm. He wouldn't be a city cab driver. He would be one of those, uh, one of those private... You know, the gypsy cab drivers, the one that talks to you when you don't, when you just want to sit in the fucking back of the cab in quiet, and oh, he's exactly. always bringing stuff up. An I can unbelievable just air freshener coming from. I don't know, but that's exactly what I pictured. In you my know where mind. it's coming from? It's coming from that awful beard that he's growing because he's all <laughs> self-conscious about his complexion. The last no, time, no, it's not. That's not where I grew it. That's not where I grew it. I'm growing the beard because it's winter time, and I grow a beard sometimes in the winter. Yeah, because I've known you for four years. You, you've never grown the beard. We've only really known each other for a year. You know, Joe, I, I mean, what the fuck? I, I've had beards in the time that you've known me. In the time you haven't. Span. I have. You haven't. Yes, I have. You haven't, Joe. Bill, you yes, haven't. I you've have. Been, you've been shaving with that broken Coke bottle since I <laughs> since I first met you. We. I've had beards in the last four years, Bill. I hate to break it to you. Hey, Scott, has Joe always had a problem like knowing how to shave? I think he doesn't have bad skin. He just does not know how to shave. Yeah, I think he he's an against the grain type of guy. In against the grain. Sorry. That's great. Thank you. Thank now, what was that, Joe? It's a bad religion song. Yeah, I was going to say. Exactly. Against the grain, that's where I'll stay. Swimming upstream, I oh, remain Jesus against the grain. Christ. Scott, tell Bill that I can actually sing when I want Apparently, to. Apparently, bad religion is, is a lounge act. <laughs> that's what amazes me about Joe. Joe tries to claim that he can sing, but he needs, like, a, like he's like Paula Abdul. He needs, like, a studio. Here it is. 3,000 miles on this, so called the shot at show. There's nothing restitution, the feather by the show. I seek a thousand answers, I find but one or two. I thought this other, nothing, rather, rather, and renew. Okay. Against the grain. <laughs> That's where I'll stay. Swimming upstream, I remain against the grain. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't sound bad when he was singing with the guy, then I realized it was the guy. Oh, well, yeah, that's why, <laughs> you know, that's why I dropped out of it. You know what quick. it is? He, he's like, uh, what's Jessica Simpson's uh, sister there, whatever the fucking name oh, is. Oh, Ashley. Ashley, Ashley yeah. Over there. Yeah, his sister. Why whatever. you start doing a jig over there for no apparent reason? <laughs> hey, easy, huh? <laughs> I guess they grain. I guess they grain. I guess they grain. Dude, I can actually sing. You can't, Joe. Yes, I can. You can't. And I also, song, and I also proved, Joe. I also proved in the drum battle, even though it was a draw, because you know who gives a fuck what they voted. But basically, you won the song. I won the freestyle. I basically proved my point, where you were claiming to be this musician. I'm like, dude, you're not. You're a comic who plays drums. So if you were actually like this fucking studio Steve Gadd musician that you were claiming to be, you should have destroyed me rather than going to a draw. I'm sorry I haven't played drums in two years, and I and I I was a little uh, rusty on the goddamn freestyle of the rudiments of fucking drumming. You have no rudiments. 
I, you know, I was. I, look, I'll tell you what. I'll take you on again, and if we can set up a thing where we can practice, Joe, I, I'm not, I'm not going to fucking battle you to mediocrity you again. Will lose we already again. did it. You we will lose did. It was, again. It was already. What do you mean lose again? I didn't lose. I proved my point. Votes dude. on the phones and in the studio said that I won. You won on that fucking website though, because you got a you head know where start. Where millions of people can participate in the vote. <laughs> no, but you got that unfair head start. They posted it before the battle where you were getting a lot of votes from your fans. It wasn't a fair. Joe, do you really vote. think that you like absolutely blew me away? No, it was but, close. It was but, close. You won the free. Like we had Aaron here, the fucking stepson of Joe Perry, and he was like, he was like, Joe won the song part, right, and I was saying. But also, I, I fucked up with the song part. Was I was trying to keep it a comedy show, so I picked a song that was beyond my playing ability because I thought we were both going to fuck right. up and it was going to be fun. So I kind of fucked that part up. So well, I, I, don't, I really don't want to fucking do a I radio show me, where, 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 where we do like a drum battle. It's really going to get say, boring. I hate to say Rush wasn't beyond my playing ability. Mm, sorry. I got to say, Joe, that song wasn't beyond my playing ability either. Well, the, well you, you, the you Rush just said song? it was. You no, no, no. Good times, bad times, which you couldn't fucking play. Give me some time with it. I'll play it. That's what I'm telling you. You, you couldn't put, put me in front of a put me in a position where I could practice for a couple uh, weeks. Jesus, this, this whole forget, argument forget came it, from the, the whole argument came from Joe singing. So why don't we? They, they have they have video games. It's like Guitar Hero, but you're singing. It measures your your pitch and accuracy. I got I to be honest with you. I, I don't want to like he's let's, he's, let's doing, he's, he's he basically do. do he's doing what America did in Vietnam was they lost and then declared victory and went home. That's what he's going to do. <laughs> Dude, I just heard them sing. I can't take rain. Bill, I, 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 Bill, did I you ever rain. Bill. It sucked. It was Bill. terrible. You Bill. couldn't fill a fucking Bill. coffee house. And then he's going to do it Bill. and be like, see, this guy from Oklahoma said Bill. I was good. Bill. So there you go. Yeah, but Bill. you know what? It won't be votes. How, I love how Bill can go, you know what? I, I was shitty on purpose for the sake of a comedy show. But there's no That's way not what I'm I said. doing that That's right not what now. I said. I there's said... no way I sang to be funny because it's a comedy show and I'm just being funny. And I'm not really trying to sing. I'll sing a fucking let, song. And we can let the game be the judge because if he fails let the game be the and goddamn it says fucking judge, game over, uh -huh. obviously he can't Scott, sing very well. Scott. Yes. We were, were we not in a band? Yes. Yes, we were. Have you not seen me play in other bands where I've had to sing? Yes. Yes. Yeah, how many you, gold records you go, do you have? Would you go Jesus as far as to say Christ. I'm a decent singer? Uh. <laughs> See, there you Come go. On, I, I, I don't want to waste any more fucking radio time with this. I really don't. I really just... All I, the times I, you I, came I, out I, to I see Salsa Info. Joe, you're, you're a fucking great comedian. And that was my point. And what kills me about the whole fucking thing is when you see... Like like soap stars going on stage doing stand up. You get they dude, you're a fucking actor. You, you're whoring out the art of comedy. Here's my question and to I you think though. that you don't have like the way you were talking like the, the, your music ability. Like I well, just thought we it was were, dis I thought that. I thought it was disrespectful. I thought it was shut up. I'm not past, past it. That. I, that that was the original point of that whole drum battle. Was like, dude, but I'll play you. That. But we're past that point. We've already established that I talked a lot of shit. We're past that. We're discussing what you're saying right now, which is, you suck! I don't suck. I have a decent voice. I'm Joe, not saying okay, I'm great, Okay, Bill. you know what, Joe? I'm not saying Compared I to a guy who works in a fucking hardware store, all right, you sing better. But right. I, I don't know. I'm comparing you to shit that I hear on the radio. Call me crazy, but I'm I fucking... Think, I think I have good pitch, and I think I'm good enough that if I, in proper rehearsal, I could do a musical or something. I don't think I could dance, but I think I could Joe, I could this is just like you yelling fuck you and running into your house with it's the bullies. Not. It's the same fucking thing. Scott, it's just like you... you me it's just Scott. like... Your own guy just didn't back you on the singing thing, and you were in a fucking Scott. band with them that you didn't make it in. Scott. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You're like a fucking comedian... Like, like, ever have they go to a well, DJ let him, let him who's like a, like, 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 like a went, failed comic? He, he was about to speak, and you jumped on him. Let him say what he's no, going to say. No, he had this awkward pause. Well, let him say what he's going to say. <laughs> he's only gonna, it's only going to support your argument, so let him say it. I yeah, think. I don't think you could do it, Joe. <laughs> to be honest. Wow, really? I mean, you're, I think you're a good utility musician. You have incredible musical <laughs> ability, but I wouldn't say that you excel at singing. You can hold a tune. That's all I'm saying is I can hold a tune. I'm not saying I'm great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not wasting time with this. What? <laughs> I'm not wasting time with this, and I'm not going to try to convince him because of, of his own delusionment. You know what I'm saying. Delusionment right? is I, I, I know what I'm saying. Whatever, dude. <laughs> and and fucking and, and his own friend is basically agreeing with me. So that's it, Joe. I'm not going to fucking turn this into to American Idol so you can live out your fucking music fetish. <laughs> Okay, whatever, dude. You know what, Joe? Fetish. Joe, you're an awesome singer. You're amazing. I can't believe I don't when, you get so when, angry when about Freddie this. Mercury. Do you see how dude, angry I got, you are? I got, I got pissed at beer pong. 
You think I really give a fuck You're... about this? I don't, Joe. <laughs> I'm just fucking filling up Dan, time. Just, we don't even have to do it on the air. I'll sing it in the fucking karaoke thing off air. I can carry a tune. That's all bro half of the Broadway shit is. I'm not saying I can get up there and go, my life. I'm not saying I'm going to oh, do that shit. I'm saying it's just, I, I don't, I don't want to hear it. It's basically, oh, I guess I, I heard you sing right there. Joe. I guess <laughs> you're a cunt and a turncoat, Scott. <laughs> and you've come and seen my band. You came and saw Salsa Windfall a million times and went, dude, really great, dude. You... I love Salsa Windfall, of course. Well, Mike was one of the greatest drummers I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I was singing, and you said it was good. Now you're saying it wasn't good. Uh, you're singing was Joe, good. and I said that you, you, you were, and I even said you're, you're a good drummer. I didn't even fucking say that, but I just thought you were being disrespectful to professional musicians, just the way you, you would, you well, would talk. You, you sounded like a guy who did stand up three times, and then when you, when the comedian starts bringing up row stories, they start going like, yeah, yeah, I did stand up. But Bill, first of all, I didn't do. I didn't play drums three times. I played in bands for five years straight out in clubs, okay? First of all. Second of all, I'm writing a screenplay right now. Is that disrespectful to screenwriters that I'm trying to write a screenplay? Like, it's like, that's no, what but I don't no, get. It, it, is it, you think no, because I didn't it's say out that. of the realm I didn't of comedy, say that. I didn't say it's that, absurd. Joe. No, it was the way you and were talking I about it. I have admitted to that. And, and, and I have admitted that's defeat all I, in that's that That's all I was fucking doing. All and right. Joe, I really don't want to turn this into... Joe, jo I can juggle, dude. I'm a good juggler. We're and then we can, and then we can, then, and then, then we got to watch you prove that you can fucking. We're not turning it into juggle anything. at a mediocre and fucking this is level. What I love. And this is what I love from the mouth, <laughs> from the mouth of fucking Bill Burr, the guy that said, "I love the drum battle. It was so much fun. We should do that again." And then as soon as I say, "Let's do it again," you go, "We're not fucking turning." No, this I meant no, no, no. I was talking about if if we did it, we got to the show to a certain level. If you were out on a gig. You could actually just do it again, the drum battle, in a live situation. But, Joe, honestly, dude, we had a drum battle, which is fucking ridiculous to do on a radio show. you got to admit, dude, that's fucking ridiculous to do. It's not and actually suggest it's funny. that we're going to fucking do it again. It really wasn't funny because we actually just really played. And I'm just saying it's going to be boring. I don't agree, but, you know, I was under the impression that you really liked I mean, it and we're wanted gonna, to try to do it again under a different circumstance, which to me was, let's do one now where we really practice and prep for it. I thought that would be fun and funny. If you want to test Phones were lit up, dude. People called like crazy. Really? You should pick an instrument neither of you have played and take a couple of months to learn it and see who can do it better. Want to do that? Want to do guitar battle? Since you just got a guitar and I'm going to get one? That'd be fun. Okay. I mean, yeah, if we're struggling for segments, yeah, I'd like it's to do not that. I mean, it's yeah. It's funny. It's clearly, you're struggling for segments. You called me. Yeah, we got some guy <laughs> from Collegeville on the fucking phone. <laughs> well, dude, you know damn well these pre-recorded ones are a bitch because right now, you know, we could have had our whole right, phones Bill. lit up Bill, with, 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 damn well. with, with, with a bunch of truckers. <laughs> they could be suggesting uh, different things uh, that Joe could be mediocre at. <laughs> yeah. Danny's uh. really coming up my ass today. <laughs> But this, I'm like, you're finally wearing a different fucking shirt, by the way. Yeah, think, that, uh, that, that, that it also purposely. looks like you got it at Spencer's. Gifts. All right. No, I got it at Target. Thank you very much. Target. <laughs> it's Keith, and our guest today is Keith Robinson. Is he reinforcing stereotypes he? by being late again? <laughs> all right, look, so you and Scott made up. Scott, thank you for coming on the show, too, man. Hey, yeah, Bill, in, in all honesty, I'm sure I was quite an asshole, and I do apologize. Okay, well, you should. <laughs> no, I'm joking, man. I was a dick, too. I was drunk. You playing beer pong. Who gives a shit, all right? Have a, ha have a have a happy again. Christmas in three days. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, all right, dude, take it See easy. You, buddy. See you guys. Joe, just just for the record, I'm real. I'm just you know. I know. Well, I'm having fun, dude. I'm laughing. I'm not I'm upset. Just fucking, I just I'm, I'm just, honestly, dude. I I I don't want to turn this show into. Uh, I make better toast than you. Yeah, get a fucking toaster, dude. <laughs> Nobody's and we'll have the fans fucking bet on it. Nobody's turning it into that. The singing thing has been an ongoing thing on the show, so Danny's saying, let's finally just put it to a test. And I said, fine, I'll put it to a test. I don't have a problem with that. And I just thought you'd go, all right, finally, we can scientifically put it to a fucking test. No, because honestly, my whole thing was, why can't we just play some music and you can just sing along to it? Or, or why can't you just sing a cappella and you wouldn't do it and I was just like, I mean, because it's like the drum battle, you need to go get drums. And you had to set it up. There was a, there was a whole production thing Danny had to do. Right. If he can sing, he can just, it's like Millie Vanilli. Remember that? Then they just said, God, you know, it's true. But dude, <laughs> just, and you're like, these guys didn't sing it. He sounds like Kermit the, the Frog. This is my point with that. 
first of all, singing a cappella on a radio show is very embarrassing, and I don't particularly want to do that, number one. And number two, that's like saying, hey, if you're a great stand-up comedian, that means I can give you a topic, and you can just riff on it for five minutes, and it'll be hilarious. It, there's different yeah. aspects to No, that's not true, dude. It you is know true. that's so not true. Our first 40 minutes, was any of that we even worked out? We just joked around. I know, Bill. But, I like to think it was a little humorous. But perfect example, you tried that one new bit last night on stage. It wasn't where it needs to be yet. And you were struggling through it, and you were going struggling through it. But I was still like, I wasn't it, like I, I was tone deaf, like forgetting how to say words is what I'm saying. But the, but my point is, there were no laughs. Sing, row row row, you boat. But there were, but there, <laughs> I'll I'll do the second one. You row row row, <laughs> row row row, your boat. Let me finish my point. There weren't laughs in the bit because the bit wasn't ready, you know. And it's just because you're a great comic doesn't mean you can just take anything and make it brilliant immediately off the bat. Which to me, Joe, I'm not asking you to <laughs> freestyle a fucking song. You can write one that works. Pick one that won a Grammy. You know why people pick on you, Joe? It's your fucking shoes. <laughs> yeah, I was going to mention Just something. staring at those awful fucking size 15 <laughs> loafers. Singing a cappella to me is like going on stage with no material. That's, that's my equivalent to that. Okay? I know. You need the Phil Spector wall of sound no, to drown also, out your meter, mediocre voice. I know. It's also I get it. a shitload easier to stay in a certain key fucking uh, or, uh, sing a, a Tom key. Petty song when that's, you have the instrument behind you and you know what fucking don't, don't you, don't you think, you know what, if we if we do it with the with this game it'll measure his accuracy so that we won't it won't be necessary to get people on the phone to give their opinions it'll just decisively give you like how well you did uh, you know what yeah, I, I I so don't give a f just let him do it then I don't, I don't, just, I don't just, dude, I'm not dying to do it I know what I can do I don't need you well, to to, to say it's yeah, good. I know, I know, Joe. Now back up as you talk this I'm shit out of the fucking room. I'm not backing up. <laughs> I'm just saying, but don't say, like, don't say let him do it. I'm not begging you to do it. I'm just saying this is why Danny no, said No, Joe, Let's I said it. I didn't want to do it. And then you're like, what the fuck? It's going to be fun. So I'm fine. Let him do it. And now you're saying, you know, I, I can't make you happy. I disagreed. Oh, now I agree. Let him do it just so he could fall on his face. And then we could all laugh at him. And it'll be uh, 20 uh, minutes. This is what I mean. But this is what, like, you guys are being such cunts about it. That's why I don't want to do it. If you guys watch, we're content, basing it off of the singing you've done on the show. I first Bill, impressions the singing of singing I do, where I'm impersonating a song to be funny. Honestly, like you can't you can't decipher when I'm just trying to be obnoxious and funny, and I'm not really trying to sing. I'm just going. I'm like being an idiot. You can't see by the expression of my face. I'm fucking joking around. No, I can't decipher. That's amazing to me. That's amazing to me. I mean, it sounds like the guy sort of like. Talking, He's so. in traffic, by the way. He just texted me. Our guest. Well, why don't you start crooning until we're done? Until he gets here. For instance, <laughs> Bad Religion, my favorite band. Lead singer, good singer. Could he sing a cappella well? No, I've heard him try to do it. But can he front that band well? Yes. That's the difference. That's the only point I'm trying to make. Can I got I the point, Joe. You're as good as the guy in Bad Religion. No, the guy who that. actually went out and sold albums and made it as a musician. I understand. All right, Bill. Well, I'm just a comedian. That's all comedians can ever be. You should stop acting because you're not De Niro, okay? No, what I should do is back up out the door and then present myself as an actor like I am De Niro and then come in here, do a mediocre but job I've, and a monologue and then say that I proved it I've because already, some trucker said I I've did. Ar you've already made... <laughs> <laughs> this reminds me of one time I was on the train and uh, I kept making eyes with this guy. You know how you just do that? And you don't want to back down, so you keep staring, right? So mm -hmm. this guy, he gets up. His, his stop had came, and he, he got up, he walked out of the train, and as the doors were closing, he put his arms up and went, what? As, uh, the, as the train doors oh, were yeah, closing, yeah. just so like, what am I going to do at that point as the train is gonna, speeding you're, away? You're going to punch him through the thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know what I would love to hear? I would love to hear the way he told the story when he got to work. <laughs> so I got in this guy's face, and I'm like, you got a fucking right. problem? Well, I didn't think so. You're right. That's what this is reminding me of. But I'm not talking that kind of shit today. That shit was talked three episodes ago, and I admitted that I talked ridiculous shit. So I'm cleared of that. I paid my fucking penance for no, that. No, no, Joe, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't get today. to decide if you're cleared of it. It's, it's an ongoing thing that you do. It's what makes you funny. I didn't talk that kind of shit today about me singing. I said, I'm a, I think I'm a decent singer. I can carry a fucking song. That's what I said. He, he just keeps dropping it down I'm and down and down. I'm not dropping it down. Carrying a tune, Joe. Jesus Christ. I mean, what the fuck? Because in one breath, you're saying that you, that you could carry a tune. You're not trying to be this big singer, but you're saying that you could carry a tune. But in the, in the next breath, you're saying that you could, you could be on Broadway with some practice. No, no I, I realize how ridiculous that statement sounds. <laughs> now, watch him back out the door. He's backing not, out the door now. Here we go. What? What? Bill, yeah, what, Joe? What? 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 <laughs> yeah, there are certain... <laughs>
All right. I don't know what to say. I, I no, I'm not, I'm not saying that you're not How talented. How many Broadway shows have you seen? Zero. <laughs> there are the showstopper numbers. I couldn't do those. But there are plenty of songs with secondary characters where I'm like, I could sing that fucking song. It's not that hard. It's the, A lot of the songs aren't any harder than anything you might hear on the goddamn radio. You know what dude? this reminds me of? I remember one time like, uh, this guy booked me in this, this gig. It was literally like an Elks Club. <laughs> right? It was brutal. And the show, it's like four in the afternoon, so it's broad daylight. And with all those deals, like, you don't want to see the crowd before you go up. They had me eating with the crowd, okay? <laughs> and before they bring me up to do my jokes, they decide they're going to have people from the crowd come up and do, like, street jokes, you know? And they're going up there, and there's this one guy who can actually tell, like, a decent street joke, but it's a fucking street joke. He didn't write it. And he goes up there three times, and each one of them kills and by the time he does the third one, he just goes, see, there's nothing to it. I don't, what, what do we need this guy for? It's the same shit. It's not the same shit. You're looking shit. at somebody on Broadway. Really, Joe, you think you, that you could literally go down to those Broadway auditions and you, you could just book that part? It's not that hard? No, Bill, I don't think I can waltz in and just book the part. Hey, what I I'm saw Joe is... on The Tonight Show. You know, it's not, it's not that. You know, it's just some guy in a warehouse. Eh, it's not that hard. I could do what he does. Stephen Lynch is on Broadway right now. Stephen Lynch can sing his ass off. Well, I'm just, all right. You know, so, you know. It's, <laughs> well, if you're going to get into talent, I mean, shit. It's not, so, but it's not inconceivable to you that Stephen Lynch wait a minute, can sing. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you telling me that you're on the same level as Stephen Lynch as I don't even know what Stephen Lynch sounds like. Dude, he's he fucking awesome. But my point is this. You're telling me that it's not inconceivable for you to think that Stephen Lynch could possibly sing and be a funny comic, but it's impossible for no, me no, to No, no, you know what it's I'm basing it That's on. That's what I don't get, I'm basing dude. it on the singing that I've heard you the do. The ridiculous singing that I do. I'm being wacky. Is, yeah, Bill. Just like when you said I purposely so, like, picked the song out of my range to be because it would add to the humor. I'm being fucking funny, dude. No, but I always said that I sucked at drums. And we too. even played but, dude, no, my but, no, song no, 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 no. Back up, back you, up. You said back you up, can sing. Back up, back up. I said that I sucked at drums. That you was don't the suck. difference. That was the difference, Joe. C compared to you, I don't suck. Which is my fucking point. I'm saying, if, dude. Every time I go to Guitar Center. Where there's real fucking, like, you know, musicians and shit. There's, like, always, like, some fucking eight-year-old prodigy. And I'm just sitting there with my jaw on the ground going, I just don't ha have that gift. Like, fuck, dude, anybody can fucking, like, you could take someone who's semi-funny and they can do, like, a bunch of fucking stand-up and shit. But, and they'll just be like, you know, he, he can, yeah, he can do it. But he's, like, holiday party kind of fucking guy. Right. As opposed to a professional <laughs> comic. That's what I'm saying. Dude, okay. I don't even give a fuck anymore. Can I just agree? Okay, dude, you're the shit. Fuck it. Good Lord. I'm not, dude, you're the one. I guess that's right. Dude, I'm just fucking around. I'm just fucking around. You're carrying this fucking axe about the fact that three months ago I talked some shit and I've admitted to I talked shit and it was retarded. And now I'm just being like, I'm, but I'm not going to sit here and let you go. You suck. And I'm going to, no, okay, but now, I suck, Bill. But now, no, but now you're that's doing it again. That's that fucking seller mentality. I'm not now, doing that. Now, now you're doing it again, though. Now you're doing it with, with, with singing. And then I, I got to sit there and watch I'm you be. I'm not doing fucking... it. I didn't say anything ridiculous. <laughs> all right, all right. It's enough. It's enough. Okay, it's enough. Forget it. I Forget suck, it. Bill. I suck. I'm, I'm worthless. I'm not saying you shoot. Jesus fucking Christ. All right, dude. You, you, Look, you, Keith, you... Keith called, so we should probably take uh -huh. a break and see what's going on. Keith's going to be there. Yeah, for the love of God. Yeah. Let's end this segment. All right. How many, by the way, what, what, what number of times is that argument? <laughs> <laughs> on the show. That's going to be the fifth time we've argued about that to that degree. It's got to be, right? Probably, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's ridiculous. That's All why right, I don't, I don't, I don't want to do... No more. Yeah, whatever, dude. You're Bill, a great singer. Forget it. Merry Christmas. I yeah, love you, Yeah, Merry Christmas. You know, three days before Christmas. I can't believe I'm <laughs> arguing with you like this. I mean, this just really isn't bringing in the uh, the holiday just cheer please here. come home for Christmas, all right? Uh, let's, I am let's going home. Where, where's home for you, Joe? I'm, I gotta Nashville. Go the music city there capital of the world. Huh? The you gotta go down there. I dropped it, and the cut had to start it up again. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta have something funny going into the break. Uh, Joe, I said, Joe, you're, you're fucking, you know, you're a good drummer, man. I'm not, I'm just saying, you know, that, I don't know what the fuck more you want from me. Nothing. I said, drop it. Let's drop it. You know. And I make one little joke, and then, and then, then you get all fucking I just said, flustered. There, there goes you the cut. Again. You know what it is, dude? I'm not it's your feet. If you would just take those fucking. <laughs> Dude, you look like you just, you, you were barefoot. You just stepped into a mold of plastic <laughs> and they just made those shoes. Look, do you know, like, remember rubbers, galoshes? <laughs> he has somehow, like, got, like, solid galoshes on. Like, there's no shoe like underneath it. Put his foot in a vacuum press. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you want me to say? 
<laughs> nothing, Joe. Nothing, I just want though. you to sit there with your annoying feet in my peripheral. I got nothing. You guys are doing a little gang up. I see what you're doing. But at Joe, the end we're of choking. the day, we're choking. Your hat just sucks. Just like you're singing. Just your like hat you're sucks. It, it does. It's terrible. You were wearing that horrific sweater the other night with that gigantic <laughs> collar V-neck on it. What horrific sweater? Yeah, yeah. What, 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 let me think back. The, the 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 only horrific sweater, only slash only sweater ever you see where that tan, fucking. Uh, that was a nice sweater. Mister Robinson's neighborhood sweater. It was that nice, you wear. and I look good it's, in it because I actually have pecs. It's I actually horrendous. have a chest, Joe. It's a horrendous sweater. Really, Joe? What about that used parachute jacket you fucking wanted to wear oh, on you stage? you mean the uh, penguin jacket that's really awesome that I get yeah. compliments on all the time? Yeah, oh, really? Well, that, you mean that fucking sweater I got at DKNY? I'm like, what are you, Rich Boss? Oh, that sweater It's sucks. a Claiborne. <laughs> you start pulling out the name. You just did the same thing. What do you mean? You just said DKNY. You just did the After same thing. After you said thing. it, you fucking well, idiot. So what? <laughs> Tit for tat, brother. You're above doing that sort He didn't of even thing. get what I was doing. He just shed all up. When you shed all over it, I didn't bring up the fact that it was an expensive. That sweater I didn't. sucks. That sweater sucks. Joe, the you're, neck on it is hideous. You, you're not. You're not a good. You're not a good dresser, Joe. Bill, you're not. Bill, you're, you have a terrible body, get... and you're you, and you're buying clothes that Bill, that do not compliment. I'm, I dress so much better Dude, than he you. Wears, it's ridiculous. He wears. Oh. I, I dress so much better than you. It's ridiculous. Really? It's really why don't we ridiculous. have Why don't we have an outfit off? He showed up next, one night. Uh, he showed up one night with a lime green T-shirt of Darth Vader clipping hedges. Uh, one time four months ago, and don't really even wear the T-shirt anymore. And he really, why? You why? Get, why? You why don't you wear it anymore? He, he didn't wear it Bob anymore. Ross felt T-shirt on. <laughs> he didn't. He did on your side with his Target clothes. <laughs> he's wearing. He never claimed to be like this great dresser. Yeah, I got tons of compliments on Dude, this shirt, Joe. I didn't claim to be one until you told me I was a shitty dresser. I didn't say you were a shitty dresser. I said, made fun of your shoes. He just fucking said you're an awful <laughs> dresser. <laughs> you're you're not an awful dresser, Joe. It's you, your, your clothes are too form-fitting. My clothes look good on me, and I get compliments on them. So, I don't know. I've been you, know, you know, you know, what he looks like he looks like that. You know that bird in that comic strip shoe that has all the papers coming out of his desk. No, no, Too Bill, obscure. Actually, nobody gets yeah, your shitty know. reference. All right, he looks like a fucking, he looks like a little skinnier Jack Klugman. <laughs> well, <laughs> whatever. Go wear that Bruce Lee t-shirt for the eighth fucking week in a row. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And okay. you're the only guy I right. still know that, that wears a fucking long sleeve thermal. You wear long johns under your t-shirts, and I'm going to take criticism from you. On this, with your hat that you got for free somewhere. You have terrible. A terrible. This is all terrible. None of this is good, Joe. It's not terrible. You wear long johns under your fucking t-shirts. I wear a thermal. It's yeah. winter out. It's yeah. cold out. Really? Yeah. Good. Why don't you go <laughs> hand out soup We're on somewhere. the radio, Joe. <laughs> go hand out hand soup Hand out somewhere. soup, you yeah. fucking hack. Yeah. Am really? I a hack? You're loud. Would you grow up in a helicopter factory? Am I a hack? <laughs> <laughs> terrible. Shut up. You're just miserable. You just got to trash me for whatever you can trash me about. All right, you know what? Somewhere this turns serious, and he's actually fucking thinks I give a shit. It didn't turn serious. Not yet. Every fucking thing I do, you go... Doesn't he it's... sound hurt? Does yeah. he sound hurt? No, you do can, sound hurt. Can I tell you how hurt. annoying it is, hurt. though? That... All right, Joe, you're a great dresser. You're a great singer. You're a great I... drummer. Everything you do is great. I'm sorry you were abandoned as a child. Uh, All right. Whatever. We're going to break Don't here. patronize me now. We're going to break. You listen to Uninformed, Bill Burr, Joe DeRosa, three days before Christmas. Yeah, God Merry bless you, Joe. Christmas, Joe, Bill. who put you in the liner notes of their CD? You didn't do that with uh, mine, huh? With your band CD? I don't have your a CD to put you in the liner band. notes. Your multi-selling fucking band. What about your little fucking, uh, where you dress like Kanye West on your business <laughs> card? How come you didn't give me a shout-out on that thing? I don't know. I, I was dressed so awfully in the picture. I was embarrassed. I said you, I said you look like it. Kanye West. Yeah, stick it up your ass. Merry fucking <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> All right, Joe, I love you, man. Come on, let's I just... I love you too, man. Right, we're going Go to break. break. Maybe uh, Keith will actually not reinforce the stereotype, and we'll get here on time. Dude, where the... F he's, he's an hour late. Yeah. Let's play some Christmas music. Try to bring it around. Hi, this is Adopted Baby Joe DeRosa with a holiday message for my biological parents. Uh, you know, guys, it's been 29 years. You could send a fucking card at this point. It's not like I'm looking to get anything. 
off of you financially. You don't have any fucking money anyway. You were both immigrants. And, you know, immigrants are always broke. You're fucking a couple of cunts. You know that? Just something. Could you give me something? Maybe to just fill the emotional pit you left in me? You fucking assholes. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. If it wasn't for the two of you, I wouldn't be so miserable that I got to do a fucking radio show at 9 p.m. on a Saturday with this miserable cocksucker sitting. Fuck you. Fuck the two of you. I hope you fucking die. Hey, we're back. Bill Burr, Joe DeRosa, spreading the holiday cheer. Listening to some more uh, you're very, classic, classic holiday music. You're very you know? good at it. It's as if we just came back from a real break. I know, right? I'm very impressed. And I'm liking this Christmas music that I'm actually not hearing right now. It's putting me... I think, Joe, I think we would get along a lot better on this show if we just always played uh, some of these classic Christmas songs. Not the ones from recently, the ones from... Uh, Way back in the day, the real They're Christmas, great. the real Christmas music. They're great. So you know, the, uh, nothing puts a smile on my face like uh, Sinatra's uh, Jingle Bells. <laughs> <laughs> Just hearing him swing around the Jingle Bells it really makes me smile. <laughs> Sound like he's subtly trying to collect money from somebody. Yeah, exactly. I was gonna say he still sounds tough in it. <laughs> it's fucking Jingle Bells. Yeah, but you know, I don't understand. How come they they there hasn't been? No one has written a good uh, Christmas song. Like, you know, it's weird, like, in the 1800s, they, when did they come up with all this Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer's horse shit? Uh, who, who gets credit for writing that story? Yeah, when did they make that song? In 13? Who, who can, who got, who, yeah, who gets credit for that uh, live for children? This is what you tell That's your kids. That's a good one. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer's a good one. Jingle Bells is a good one. Classic. Uh, Which one? You know what? When I, King Wenceslas. You know what? I always hated Silver Bells. I hate Silver Bells. I uh, I never been a big fan of uh, the Christmas song either the, that that uh, Nat King Cole song, Our, chestnuts okay. roasting on an open fire. Yeah, and all that Johnny Mathis stuff I'm not into. Uh, I don't know, but you know what it is? You just listen to I it like as a those kid. Guys, I just don't like that song. You listen to it as a kid, so that means like that's like Christmas to you. But like somewhere along the line, I don't know. I can't. No, like they had. There's not been a good Christmas song in at least forty years. I think. Well. I would say 15, yeah, around like Madonna? 15 years ago. Like Madonna? Santa, baby. Yeah, that's She hoard it all up. He is my pussy, baby. <laughs> that's what sucks. Well, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer was created by Robert L. May in uh, 1939. Wow. 1939. Now, the, the, the story of Rudolph? Yes, the story is owned... The er, story is owned by the Rudolph Company and has been sold in numerous forms, including a song special and... Other stuff, feature film. So he named it after that. himself. No, the guy's name was Robert. But it was the Rudolph family. I don't know. It just says the story is owned by the Rudolph company. I think it's just they own. So what the lie? To what, what, what lie did they tell kids? When did they come up with this whole uh, Santa Claus thing? When did when did they come up? So what lie were they telling kids? Like in the eighteen hundreds? Like did you just go to church and they gave you like a like a blacksmith hammer? Is that what they gave a kid for Christmas? What did you get for Christmas and? Uh, <laughs> what did you get for Christmas in like the 1800s? Well, Santa, I mean, the whole Santa Claus uh, legend, I mean, that goes back a pretty long way. It does? Well, what yeah. was it? Where? Well, he just wasn't the fat, jolly guy that, you know, you, you guys know today. Like the whole Santa Claus. Was, was he a rapist committing well, no, genocide? I mean, was he reason, the guy who killed the Indians? <laughs> the only reason he looks like, you know, uh, you know in, in, in red and white is because Coca Cola re imaged him. Back in probably like the forties, the thir like thirties, forties. Really? Yeah, that's why. That's, yeah, that's why he's red and white. Santa used to be like you know, just wearing anything, not anything, but I mean, he, he didn't. He didn't have wearing to be a red. T shirt, Jägermeister yeah. T shirt, yeah, and, <laughs> some and jeans, form fitting shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah, <laughs> coming down. But uh, <laughs> yeah, Coca Cola totally just totally. Danny just... really does dress like he just won one of those awful carnival games. It's terrible. <laughs> like, what do you want? You want the twisted sister, the or do you want the uh, the docking t shirt? Look at his mom, mom jeans. jeans. Look at his ass Stand and up. his mom jeans. Turn around in those fucking things. Look. <laughs> You got that it's... wide spread on the back there? Oh, my God. What are you God. talking about? You know what? I'm, they're mom jeans, Danny. What the fuck are you talking about? He's they're saying, mom jeans. He's saying you got on mom jeans. Buy Danny what, some what, sweatpants what are you gonna do for about Christmas. It? What? Keith Robinson just walking in. <laughs> 
Just walking in. Stop oh, acting like, is. you know what I don't like? He already walked in like he was above the gig, yet he sat in traffic to get here. Just sit down, stupid. You got nothing going on in your Keith career. He's wearing one of his signature fucking zip-ups. Oh, there my he gosh. is. Grab, grab, a mic, grab, grab the mic there. This this is like before, before, be... Shut up before you start yelling at us. We, we were thinking this, this is our, our Christmas episode, so we had to bring in somebody who is going to bring in the holiday cheer, who's the most uplifting guy we know, and it has to be... Miserable. Uh, Miserable Keith, Keith Robinson. Robinson. What's up, man? Uh, Keith Robinson. Uh, I'm just annoyed right now. I'm annoyed that be. Joe is on a radio show and he can't afford cable. <laughs> that, show, <laughs> <laughs> that shows you how awful uh, they show You thought about that the whole car ride <laughs> up no, here, didn't you? stupid. <laughs> <laughs> he has payment arrangements on everything. And he has a radio show. I am. I'm broke. What are you going to do? No, I'm it broke. really sucks. Like, a, a, anytime I've ever crashed with him, it's the worst. And he's got the worst <laughs> movies. He goes to that that bargain bin VHS thing. He has like uh, what is, what, 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 yeah, what is that? What is that loading. movie you like there? The one that I always uh, uh, My Blue Heaven. It's a great flick. <laughs> Danny, isn't My Blue I like, Heaven? A good I movie? do like that movie. You, you know, like you know. It. I think I think it's because I'm ten years older than you. Like, I guess if I was a kid, that would have been like my Pee Wee Herman or something. But <laughs> it's a funny movie. It's funny. Uh, Rick Moranis is funny in it. Steve Martin's funny in it. Joan Cusack's funny in it. Joan Cusack, you mean? Cusack, whatever the fuck. She's Ooh. funny in it. Oh, you can call. You know what? This show has so. I think the FCC is not even <laughs> paying attention to the show. That's no. your first one that bombed, and then I really enjoyed that. You just tried to trash the show. I know this show. You look a little uncomfortable, Keith. You're trying to act me. like you're smooth. I am. You know, smooth, somebody man. get him some headphones so he can feel. Adidas fucking cover up doesn't fit. He's got two extra. Oh, I know. Fuck. What you <laughs> Come on, Bird. Jump in on it. How long you hang that long? Nah, man. You can handle Keith look, one I'm on one. I'm gonna tell you what. If y'all get twenty listeners calling in. That'll stop me. You from know walking something? Out. I just want. 20. I don't. I don't like how Keith. I don't believe Keith is acting have. like he's above this show. Like he has, I am. Like he has a more successful show. You know what? Why don't we get into what Keith has going on in his career? You want that, that? that he has the hype, <laughs> so we can see why he's so above this show. You, I'm going to show you why I'm so above. Okay. This show, what, 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 do you, what do you have going on here? <laughs> he's already stalling. He's trying well, to make I up gotta, stuff. I got to show you. Yeah. Get your fingers out my face. <laughs> You, know, you gotta talk into the mic, Keith, Mr. Professional. This big mic is getting on my goddamn nerves. Go ahead. What, 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 like Petey isn't Green. this what microphones look like <laughs> when you <laughs> started in comedy? <laughs> Joe, wait a minute. I know. Joe just bombed what, what, again. What, what, no, what, I didn't. He yeah. didn't hear it because you were talking over it. Oh, what, what, big what, Billy what? didn't hear I don't like how his feet was up like he's the boss. That's I really am the annoying. boss, stupid. <laughs> oh, here we if go. you don't start being a better guest, we're tossing you out of here. You can jump back in your Ford Focus, Mr. Successful. <laughs> <laughs> Keith Robinson. The fuck do you get off showing up in a fucking economy car oh, trying to trash sweet. our show? God, That's it. He doesn't even know how to put headphones on. He does so little that. radio. Shit. I got Bose headphones. All right. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so where, 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 where are you working? Who are you where? opening for coming up? Well, okay. Where's Wanda working, and who are you warming up for? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well number one, I'll be warming up for uh, Bernie Mac. Two, Steve Harvey. Three. Yep, he does. Keith, basically. Keith, you know, you know, you know. I'm a career opener. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I when, have you no know, problem saying that. When you go to see somebody famous, you know, and you're there getting a hot dog, and you hear that person babbling in the background, you're like. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck is that guy? How did he end up doing that? And you think that the person actually knows George Carlin or actually hangs out with the star that they're opening for? He doesn't. Yeah. Keith has a broom closet down the hall, and he opens Keith's, up for yeah. all the... You start losing confidence in that. I just see it in Keith's your face. I didn't start losing stand. confidence in it. He's at the concession stand during the intermission buying the fucking hot dog, just oh. praying somebody asks him a question. Really, really, where are you at tonight, Joe? I am at Caroline's. With who? Uh... With You're opening for me, stupid. You're opening for me. Shit. I hate it. I like it. I I'm it. doing the show with two career openers. <laughs> yeah, like, but you know something? Joe still has hope. Joe has not, no hope. I'm Have not, you seen I'm, his act? I'm not he saying. He has no hope. I'm coming up the ladder. I'm coming up the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> Jogging right He's by. He's chasing him. Mike Vecchio. <laughs> <laughs> for That's those great, of you Keith. That yeah. don't, no one for those of you who don't know who Mike Vecchio is, right. see, this uh, is why what Keith you mean, you? It's five people. <laughs> Give me 20 listeners calling in. I just need 20. Keith, we're doing real well in the show, and we get great I reviews. I want to see 20 people call in And we the get show. great reviews. You want, numbers. Hey, here, here's one thing that, that a lot of people Le don't yeah. know about Keith. Keith is one of the worst gamblers in the history <laughs> oh. of gambling. Anytime, oh, you actually owe me 100 bucks. Anytime I need to make like $100... 
I just, you know what I like this? Look at this. He has the old hundred with like the little face on it. You take this out of your piggy bank, Come on, you broke son of a bitch. You damn right. You know he's got a hole in the back in the backyard. Hey, let's let's bet the Ricky Hatton. I know where you're going for Ricky Hatton Mayweather fight. Huh? Let's bet that right now, dude. Do you think I'm I'm gonna buy into that great white hope thing again? <laughs> I thought you, you were. I thought you would go. Have for you got, it. Have you guys been watching that thing at all? No, not at all. This the 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 guy uh, the guy who 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 makes the, those HBO boxing things. They do it, turn them into these mini series. I don't know who the the guy is who does these things, but it's like they get you so amped up for the fight. They, they could literally have me fighting Mike Tyson, and they would edit it in a way that you'd be like, you know, I think Bill has a shot. I really think he's got a shot. And then you pop down like 60 bucks, and within three seconds, you know, my face would be on the other side of the ring. So this documentary thing, it's just a vehicle to sell the pay-per-view. It's, it's oh. yeah, oh, and it's great, too. It's Because it's, it's, they're both great at, at talking shit. It, it's, uh, you got the classic, the English the English guy, I'm going to fucking, 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 he's talking like that, and Mayweather's talking all this trash. And I got to admit, Keith, you know, uh, and I think this isn't racist at this point because black people have so dominated that sport. I can't tell you how bad I want the fucking white dude to win. I just, just for once. But that's what I want to hear, though. I hate white just, guys trying to pretend like they're not racist. Well, let me ask you, is it, is it like, do you think it's okay at this point for me to deliberately root for like a white wide receiver? Yes. To be overly excited do it. Just about don't, Wes don't. Welker? Yeah, but like, don't shit, act he's like... actually fast. He's actually outrunning a couple of those black guys. <laughs> no, it's exciting. I, I was... hate for people to, you know, Joe, don't say anything's exciting because you don't watch sports. I was we'll going to the... chime in. We'll get to the soaps hey, later. This is my... <laughs> <laughs> what are you this is my <laughs> fucking show, and you will respect me on my radio show. Billy, I know. He really does. Make he him does... put his feet down. <laughs> I, we've been trying the whole time. We've been making fun of his, his plastic galoshes that he's wearing. There's nothing wrong with these shoes. He got his Stormwatch boots on. He, does. <laughs> he is on pleather moccasins. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the stitching on the side. Oh, you know what? That I was made by a like sad a... Native American. I can't even act like I, 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 I'm not with you. Like, I was at my house with Patty today, and I'm just sitting there going, I don't want to put these fucking shoes on. I hate these fucking shoes. But I didn't have any other black shoes that went with a button down. And I had to fucking wear them. You guys are first of all, they're right. not shoes. They stink. Let's deal. <laughs> they stink. I got them in a gift and bag. And Joe, Joe tries to tell me he looks good in like like a, 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 a button down. Look how fr you look. Like you just got fired. He just got done drinking. It's all like wrinkled and shit. You look like you had a real stressful day. No, the blazer goes over it, and it's a great fucking outfit, and you look good on stage. All right, that's what you do when you want to look like a professional. You dress like a goddamn man. Not in those fucking. <laughs> I'm reaching for something right now. You got nothing. Reaching. You got nothing. Because you know what's funny? I came down dressed like I'm on the radio. You're yeah. wearing the shit you're going to wear because on I stage. Because I got to go out to work tonight right from the fucking show. What do you, you want don't. me to do? You yes, don't. I you, do. have time. you have time to go home. Well, Bill. Why don't you go home and freshen Keith up, didn't Joe? If show up two hours late, maybe I would have had time. You're going to have to Ooh. go right Whoa. to the. Ooh. You're going to have to walk right to the stage in that fucking Hanes Sports Authority <laughs> bargain bin t shirt you're fucking wearing right now. It's an athlete's foot t shirt on top. And that shrunken hat that you stole off the some 12 year old uh, kid. He does look like a little league softball coach. <laughs> <laughs> I'll freshen up. I'm going to put on a sweater for you again tonight. He didn't like my sweater last night. Wait I, had, a minute. I had on a nice uh, beige sweater on. Keith, I wish you he could just, have seen he just this me. sweater. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you uh, did you see the, uh, the kid? You know who Joe Horn is? Yeah, guy, is he still on the Saints or he get no, traded? No. No. This is Joe Horn from Houston, Texas. He's seen neighbors, two neighbors coming out of the um out of the house, breaking his Wait, wait, but just to stop, is this the guy from the Saints who used the cell no, phone? No, this is some white redneck guy. Joe Horn? Joe Horn is his name. What is with you? you just you, Did you see Mike Vecchio and you're just using these obscure No, things. Joe Horn. It's a guy named Joe Horn. I'm going okay, to explain okay, it to okay. you. Right. I'm not, it's not obscure if people, okay. if you've got any listeners, they've seen this. He uh, caught, <laughs> to, caught two. <laughs> <laughs> he caught two. <laughs> well, sorry, maybe if Bill. we hype. I know you didn't like Maybe, that maybe if we hype that you're coming. I just really, you know what I mean? You gotta I'm be, sorry, Bill. you got to be coming from a place of like success. No, if you, if I'm you. I'm going to slap those fucking <laughs> biggie small glasses right off your face. Exactly. His I just got out of prison and converted to Muslim. No, why did you he add doesn't. That joke? Because it got him to fucking laugh. Shut your fucking mouth. I actually, mouth. I, you, went, you, you, you went the wrong direction. He actually looks like he, he's going to do a comic view. He's getting his orange suit steam pressed. Comic you already got your glass on? for four years. And you'd know that because you, you know, watched that horrible channel. Thank you for channel. saving my bomb with your worst bomb. <laughs> no, Joe Horn, what happened is these two guys was breaking in his neighbor's house. Mm -hmm. And Joe Horn called 911 up. And he's like, all right, I'm about to go over there. 
Oh I'm yeah, about to shoot him. <laughs> he said, you, you, you I heard that. Yeah, and he yeah. Said, you had a click, click, and he showed the gun. And he like, went over and he shot the guy. And he shot the yeah. He shot two of the guys, killed him dead. It was in Texas, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I read Houston is in Texas. I wasn't and what, 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 what did that story speaking. have to do with what we were talking about with the uh, what? rooting for white athletes? Uh, well, well it, so now what? I can, I can so, root for a white a... redneck with a gun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Did he shoot black guys? I mean, I, I don't want to take it to that level, it's dude. Colombian. I'm just saying, I'm psyched he, at this. He this... thought they were black. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't know they were Colombian immigrants. Dude, Wes Welker is the first white wide receiver. I think it's like maybe Steve Largent, because I never got into that 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 nerdy looking guy on Denver. Who's who's the guy that they had? Joe, who is that white wide receiver? Joe, yeah. completely. He just, doesn't. I know he doesn't Chuck, know. Uh, Chuck Spruce. I believe was his name. Chuck Spruce. That's the name. That's the white guy name you come up with. <laughs> he came up with a Def Jam white guy name. Uh, uh, Wes, Wes Walker is is like, uh, but he's all right though. Well, uh, here, here, here we'll get into your your gambling. Anybody wants to make money here, all you do is do the opposite of what Keith's going to say. We're pre-recording this thing. It's going to be airing on December twenty second. Do you think the Patriots are still going to be undefeated at no. that point? Definitely not. They're going to lose to Pittsburgh this weekend. This so Sunday. put your money Pittsburgh. on the Patriots. You heard it. The Pittsburgh Patriots will, will absolutely be undefeated still through the end of this season. Joe, who's the quarterback of the New England Patriots? Into the next season. Let's see, if he, let's see if to how famous Tom Brady is if he can. I oh, just fucked it up. I yeah. Tom Brady, said the I knew that. I knew that. <laughs> God damn it. Who's that wide receiver? Fucking uh, Tom Brady, I believe, switches <laughs> positions <laughs> and uh, <laughs> plays both positions. <laughs> On the field. Who, who's the quarterback for the Colts? Randall Cunningham. <laughs> <laughs> this is like this is like fascinating. Oh my God. Like name name the top three running backs of all time that you you feel. Who are the uh, top Mike three? Quick. Uh, it's all Eagles. Uh, some, some, how about a Wilbert Montgomery? Doug Flutie. <laughs> <laughs> And, Jesus uh, Christ! Joe is awful. I'm what do you what do you what do you, what do, you do? what do you do with all your free time? That actually fascinates me because I play video games. I fucking Keith you know, plays video games. He can still talk about I, sports I like a sport. man. Uh, I read a little bit, you know. You don't video read. Games. Watch a lot of I watch a lot of DVDs. I know you don't have cable. Yeah, um, <laughs> you gotta watch DVDs. You don't you watch DVDs. Like, I go shopping. I'm a you gotta top load and DVD. <laughs> I walk down the street. I look into bars that have cable. Yeah, I try to get the gist of what's going on. I really am like a woman. I really enjoy shopping quite a bit. And I'll take myself out during the day sometimes. And just... <laughs> to, to buy a new outfit? Yeah, buy little things for myself. Maybe I, I like a nice thrift store. You know, uh, a bargain. Oh, yeah, I like a nice bargain at a store. Sale, I get very excited about that. That's basically my life, dude. I shoes made out of a too. beaver's tail. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I sleep a lot. There's a lot of sleeping in my day. And all right, Joe, and your eating. day's boring. Let's get back Jeez. to sports. So what all do you right. think? They're going to lose to the Steelers? Yeah, they, they're definitely going to lose to the Steelers. Oh, yeah? Steelers are going to put it to them. Why? Brady, they've been getting pushed around a lot. And because you know what? I got to give it up to Keith. Keith has been saying sep since September, he's like, I don't like their defense. You said it during the, uh, right. the Cowboys you know game. Guess They're what? Look, can we not talk about this? This is fucking boring to me. I can't. What are we going to talk about shopping? No, but I can't <laughs> add anything to this. Yeah, at Joe. All. Joe, what are some of the new hot new talk. looks for the fall? Oh, well, have well, you been can listening? we talk about something besides sports for Christ's sake? Joe, there's a lot of people who like sports. All right. All so right. why does it have to be all about you? There's it's a, not all we about have me. 19 listeners, Joe. I, I'll tell you, 18. Well, you told me my day was boring. Your this shit is boring to me. This is just as boring Sports? to me as my day is to you. Well, then why don't you go run out and go <laughs> no. do go on a shopping spree? I'll throw you 20 bucks. What do you got, Keith? <laughs> I thought twenty. I mean, we're, we're not a sports show. So you're talking about your picks for the season. Joe, you know what this is a callback to? What? That's like when those those the people from the Church of Satan. We had them come in, and right. they ended up being boring. So I attacked them, and you got pissed at me. And you're like, "Can we really fucking talk to the guest? We have a guest in. All right. Why don't you treat him like a guest? Yeah, he's, treat he's me into like sports. a guest. All right. Yeah. He's into sports. All right. He's not really a guest, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, Joe, did, all right. Did you did you play any sports when you were? Uh... No, I'm not saying you got to talk to me, but can we talk to someone? Joe, about I don't give a sport? fuck. You don't set the parameters here. If I want to talk to you about, it, I'm gonna. You answer it or you don't. No. Wait, wait, when, 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 wait, wait, when, who died like and this. made you king uh, you like, shit all of a sudden? Whoa. What what the, who made me king shit? This is our I show. I made it king shit. This is our show. No, it isn't our, our show. This yes, isn't our is. show. Okay, Joe? Yes, it You're, is. I'm grooming your replacement already. You don't even know it. This is you our hear Dan show. Dan Natterman? This is uninformed He's on with Bill and Joe. And Joe. Uh, You're and co Joe. Co-hosts. Okay, like Daryl Hall and John Oates. Daryl Hall goes out on tour by himself. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you go out on tour by yourself, forget it. Joe, what sports did you play growing up? I played soccer for a week, <clears throat> and I hated it. 
with oh, a yeah? passion. Hated it with you a passion. You seem like the first time the ball, like, you know, hit Two your hand. shin, you just, like, went down in a heap. And just, just... It was cold. The, first, you the know, only thing that cold. gives Joe any kind of is he can rap a little bit. Yes, That's the Joe thing. can rap a little bit. Joe yeah, I, I saw his. Uh, I saw his. Uh... Joe, he can rap a little bit. I was impressed with him. We had, a, you know, a lot of Thank guys you. from the hood looking at him. There was a lot of pressure, and he came through. He did. Thank he you. did his eight mile thing, and he did it out in front of the cellar, which I think is yeah. one of the ballsiest <laughs> things ever. All right. Well, thank you very much, guys. Okay. Now, <laughs> are you supposed to have broke off into a rap real fast? No, I'm not rapping. Rap if you think I'm rapping damn. in this room with that fucking cocksucker that sits over there? No, I everybody. believe in that never aspect rap. of you. I believe in that aspect there is of you. No Joe way. never rapped. No, no, I never you, rapped on the you show. You never rapped on the show? You yeah, Joe, come up, on, Joe. You can pull up one of my songs. Shut up. I'm, I'm not like, going on YouTube and looking for you, stupid rap. You yeah. don't do it. Danny does it, dummy. Danny uh, will just, pull it just up. go check me out on YouTube. What am I, your fan? Not Rap. you. I'm saying Danny can pick it up. Why don't you this just... is how radio works, Keith. There's a producer, and uh, the guests don't actually have to do things. Like yeah, that's how it works. You don't have to go show. on YouTube. No, but I'm saying... Have you ever been on the radio? This must be real exciting no, for you to finally be on the radio. Keith, it's kind of like when you produce <laughs> wow. uh, your room in Philly, right? Yes. Uh, you don't have to do all the little things. Oh, the that's right. Actually, that was another, right. That's another part of his career. That's what I thought we were getting to, and you guys broke off into what the Buffalo Bills are going to do this season. We didn't say Joe, we, we have an hour and ten minutes to fill I'm here. Like, I'm all right? just being a... Stop well, shooting the load here. I'm not <laughs> shooting the load. I'm just fucking you're, around. You're running, you're running to the end. Well, Keith, like a lot of these, these rappers out there who they just don't rap, they also have a clothing line, they maybe have some <laughs> cologne going on, they branch out, and a lot of people don't know that when, Joe, when, when uh, Keith is not opening for somebody who's way more successful <laughs> than him... He also what are you, Riddler. <laughs> what kind of laugh is that? <laughs> That's a good guttural laugh. You've never heard it come out of my mouth because you're not funny. Uh, you used, used to be a sidekick. <laughs> Keith actually is. Uh, he's actually decided to phase out the stand-up part of your career and become a booker. Is that right? No, I've noticed not at that. All. I have a room in Philadelphia that I do, man. What do you mean that you do? You that book I it. Do you book it? I that I do, Billy. It's black room. It's the black people for black folk. When you book it, huh? And these people call up and they leave your veils. And do you have a little book that you, you fill it in? I how, got how a little you, book. He's fidgeting. Look I'm how making you come there. I'm giving you a buck seventy-five. <laughs> what you doing? Keith, I, I'm never doing your room. You're on a door. I'm never doing your room. Yeah, you are. I'm not. Yes, you are. I'm a little, He'll never do it, but you will. I'm a little Joe, hurt that you didn't I'm invite me it. down. Well, you should be hurt. Now back to you. Yeah, Bill. why don't you invite him down so he can pay for cable? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pay my cable bill this month. What do your spots pay down there? Uh, my spots pay very well. What do you get besides chicken fingers? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, look at Fuzzy Zeller over there. <laughs> what do you get? How come the security guy downstairs look like Angelo Lazaro? <laughs> oh, and that guy has the worst... Attitude, man. Yeah, he sucks. He's a dick. <laughs> He's a dick. I go, do I need to sign in? He's like, no, you're famous. You don't need to sign in. It's like, douche, just say yes. <laughs> I thought I'd been here enough yeah, he's times. he's a fucking dick. Remember that day he was eating those hard-boiled eggs and yelling at us and the fucking eggs were spitting yeah. everywhere? <laughs> yeah, but... The yeah, but you know Danny what? Danny yelled at him. Danny, but they, the, it was so funny when Danny yelled at him because he really reprimanded him like like a mom. Like he was like, "Listen, I don't appreciate the attitude that we get from you when we." Because like, <laughs> he's a fucking dick. Well, meanwhile, some old lady in the street, you fucking cunt. She was a cunt. Uh, I was like, "Why don't you give some of the cunt to that guy?" <laughs> Danny, there? that's that's your new hook. Danny calls it as he sees it. <laughs> that's according to who. Plus, that guy has to sit down there. I mean, just that job, dude. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, you got to be a miserable fuck if, hey. if like, you know. Those you're, you're cathedral fucking... ceilings, your loser thoughts hey, just echoing in your head. A... 50 years old, and the best that you, you did with yourself was you fucking sit and watch a lobby. Go take a fucking class fucking and get asshole. another job then. You know, what do you want from me? I didn't pick that fucking gig for him. You know? Well, you know. He's from some obscure, fucking ambiguous foreign country. That that job is like being Donald Trump where he comes from. I guarantee it. Nah, he's from the Bronx, man. No, he's, <laughs> he's from the Bronx. He lives in the Bronx. He's not from the Bronx. <laughs> That's all he's from. The... <laughs> Yeah, that guy's a fucking cunt, man. Fuck him. But you're dressed like a doorman today. What? <laughs> <laughs> What's on and your t-shirt? He, he's uh, leaving straight from here. He's going right to Caroline's. What's uh, on your t-shirt? What is that? What? What's on your t-shirt? Keith is dressed like he's doing a guest star on The White Shadow. What is that? Too old a reference? No, yes, I, I thought it was Jesus Christ, though. Billy. Update it. What is that? I know. Look at his gambling really just... fucking shirt that he's wearing. Let me see. Scatman Crothers had that over his bed in The Shining. Yeah. <laughs> wow. He did. Who Shut is up this and guy? Take Danny, it. you should have never opened your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? I kind of like it, though. Did you what? get that for free when you did a guest spot for Keith, Kevin Hart? Keith, for the Hart love of God, can you, can you talk into Come the mic? Come on! 
Oh, no, you talked over another good one. <laughs> it wasn't a good one. You <laughs> yes, better it thank was. him for that. Say it again. Danny's laughing. No, I'm not I saying heard it again. It's over. Do it again. Do it again. No, it's over. No, it's, it's pre-recorded. It's, pre it's, 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 it's pre-recorded. We won't keep the first one. Go I ahead. I said, did you get that for free when you did a guest spot for Kevin Hart at the Borgata? Why that would you do it again? That's decent. Why would you do it again? Because he said it was decent, and I don't like because you. Because your boss said it was decent? Oh, fuck you. Oh, <laughs> oh. Oh, oh that made it. Look at that. You see a little twitch in his face? That made him uncomfortable. I feel like this show, I got reduced to sidekick. Uh, you all are a sidekick. You've always been a sidekick. You've been big no sidekick in life. I knew you were doing this to me. I knew what you did were doing I do? This I, br I brought a nice guy in for yeah. the holidays, and no, all of a sudden you're getting Burr, all defensive. burr has been saying little by little over the course of the show. He's been going, you know what? Why don't you let me uh, just intro everything? And, uh, you know, every week he wants to intro more shit, and I knew he was just pushing me back in the sidekick from co host Push you sidekick. No, it, no, it isn't Push you back in the sidekick. Sidekick. First of all, I'm joking. So you start off a sidekick. No, what I'm saying, Joe, is, is is if you just have to have one guy be the point guy to go into break, come out of break, so I'm it's joking. it's organized. You, you, dude, making, stop saying you're joking when you're not God, joking. You got beads joke. of sweat on your forehead, no, and it's bugging me. Because it's 98 degrees in here right now. <laughs> but you're layered. Danny, Danny have you uh, done this producing before? Sure. All now, time. who would you say is the sidekick? I'm gonna go uh, with the Rose on this one. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I was is it gonna, uninformed with Joe DeRosa and Bill you know Burr? You know what? <laughs> Joe, you're going to let him do this? You're going to let him come oh, in here and divide and conquer? You're really going to let him do this? Gonna, first, I'll He's taking the bait. Go first, ahead. I'm going to do this. Oh. I was going to buy you a Christmas present because I like all the work you do for us. I'm going to buy something. I'm going to break it right in front of you and throw it in you the street. Can't, you can't Second pay for cable. cable. He's he's gonna buy me a present. Gonna buy you. <laughs> he was going to buy you one of those big M&M oh, cookies. Why don't, you take, why don't you take the money you were going to spend on a present for me and, and go uh, get a vocal coach? <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Ooh. Wow. I'm joking. It's a callback from before. Look, get your girl in here right now, because I'm going to start cutting really fucking deep. Sweetie, come in here for a second. Oh, my God. Wow. Oh, wow. Well, this, this, Joe, it's the holiday <laughs> episode. What are you doing here? No, I'm not going to attack her. I'm going to attack you. Forget it. Nobody's with me on that. Joe, that was, I don't know what ugly direction you were going to take that in. I was going to make fun of him to his girl. Joe, wait, wait, to laugh at him. Wait, wait till the January show. This is the holiday right. episode. Let's, holiday. let's try to keep it nice. It's That's why we brought Keith Robinson in Fuck, here. This is full of chair, goddammit. This uh, has been Daddy, like the pile so on the Rosa Daddy, show, so i got to keep with the yeah, theme. Yeah, no, I don't like how you're doing it, though, because you you won't pile on him. You're scared Because he's him. the boss. He's not the boss. <laughs> He, he's not the boss. I like what Keith's saying. <laughs> he's, not, he's not the boss. He's not the boss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, that's hilarious. Oh. I'm sweating like an animal right yeah. now. And see, that's the whole thing. I like the way you let your sidekick. You make him dress up. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> he's got you a nice button a down on. <laughs> well, let's you just, just to bitch. switch it, do you have any tips for him on how to be a good opener? How to be a good... Whoa. Yeah. 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 No, no, don't, think, don't, think, don't think you're going to come in here and start... I just switch switched it. Do, it's been switch switched. It. Right. Rhonda likes pineapple right. shiny slices glasses. in the green room before the show, right? That's what you add. Yeah, that is what I add. Really? Shut up. Um, Are you allowed to make <laughs> eye contact with your uh, headliners? Or you Sometimes. just have to stare at the ground? No looking uh, at one in the face. What kind of shoes does Bernie Mac wear? I'm sure you look at them all the time <laughs> after you intro them. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Do you bring a, a lotion to Ashy Larry when you was open up for them? <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> Ashley Larry, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> I was opening for Charlie Murphy, you <laughs> no, dumbass. No, you for Ashley Larry. <laughs> he had, oh, because he, well, he, he, he headlined. He headlined. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, did, I know I didn't stuff. host. I middled. I featured. Oh, I featured. Well, you and now I go to series. Caroline's. I go to Caroline's, but and I do put, very well. They put Billy in the um, feature spot because he couldn't be the face man for that tour. Everybody would have walked out. They <laughs> yeah, no see. one knew. They Nobody knew me, admittedly. <laughs> a familiar face up front. Admittedly. Admittedly, and if I was struggling now, that would actually hurt, but it doesn't. What? You know what, Keith? Next time I come to Caroline's, maybe I'll let you host. What do you think about that? You just can't look at me. <laughs> I'm looking right and at you. And there'll be no dark-skinned black guys from Philly allowed <laughs> in the green room. I'm going to make you stand out in the hall. <laughs> no Ronnie Long, no Toure, and no other people. Nobody knows who the fuck I'm talking about. Exactly. Now, listen to me. I want to get this really clear. Whose show is this? I just want to know. When well, you want to sign a deal. You know what it is, really? And honestly, whose show it's is our it? show. And collectively, we don't like you. <laughs> you, know, you think like you're really you gonna come in here? That's you how came I in here the boss. and you tried. You tried. You're trying to, to divide and counter no, with your Chuck Muncie fucking goatee. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck Muncie. <laughs> Ain't nobody know who Chuck Muncie. Yeah, hey, we got a lot of truck drivers out there. They know who he is. <laughs> no, but and, and Danny understands. Now you know you have to respect Billy, but you know you can give it to him any way you want. 
Am I Stop right, Stop fidgeting, Keith. You're nervous. Okay, uh, you got your little joke in, and it's over. It's Let's go back to you I and how you're quitting, that he's a you're quitting stand-up comedy, and you're now booking Danny rooms. Danny has to respect me more than he respects you. So how does that make you feel, 55-year-old <laughs> comedy legend? <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's up there, fucking black yeah. rich boss? How does that make you feel? <laughs> you guys got the same goatee and everything. Uh, what, how does that make you feel? I'm going to let this one run out. Go ahead. Yeah. It ran out. What was it like? It ran out all over your face. What was it like to aud- <laughs> What was it like to audition for Last Comic Standing at seventy two? Well, if I had a, would have auditioned for Last Comic Standing, did you? You standard, didn't. You, yeah, you didn't jump I in. I never auditioned. I gotta respect for last that. Comic I gotta respect that. You didn't audition for it either, did you? Yes, Joe auditioned for it oh, twice. Oh, he did. He auditioned twice. I got nothing here. You got me. I got Two it. times. I can't even defend this. You came back to get raped again? Yeah, but he wore That's his blazer. Podcast. He, he wore his blazer. He thought the blazer was the reason he didn't get it. It was reality TV. <laughs> Maybe that would have given him a hook. <laughs> We got to give Joe a catchphrase because you know you're gonna audition for it again. No, I'm not. I'm <laughs> the third time they come will. in. I swear to God, I never will. They told me I wasn't allowed. Cause Why they... don't you open with I'm half white, half Egyptian, <laughs> and I fucking blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I opened up with a bit uh, which I thought was funny, but it really bombed. Where I talked about how um, Kurt Cobain Boo. and no. Biggie and Tupac died at the exact right time in their lives, and how Michael Jackson should have got shot right after Thriller. That sounds like an awful <laughs> Keith Robinson <laughs> premise. Is, it is. is. I know it is. Bit. That's actually pretty good when you think about it. Did you ever make uh, no, that I funny? I thought about it. What? I said I thought about it. That's very good. <laughs> The context of the joke, you know what the whole thing of the joke do is? The joke, yeah, Keith, do the, the joke, Keith, do the joke. It's Keith. like we die at the right time. Keith, People die. I heard the joke oh. on the tape I have from New York Entertainment when I was in and college. somebody, you know, stole that damn joke. Somebody stole my joke. Good. Oh. You shouldn't have owned it in the first place. Who stole that a, it? That was a brilliant joke, actually. I got you doing it on two drink minimum or whatever fucking show it was. Well, yeah, they it was died that. at the right time. <laughs> <laughs> Shooting your hand out, karate chop in the fucking air. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Keith, Keith is much more smoother on stage. He, used to, he was big time in the energy. When I first came down to New York, he was actually going on stage. He was wearing, remember those plastic batting helmets? Every time I saw him, he was wearing those things, and I was looking like, why the fuck is this guy wearing those helmets? Is this, is this like some black guy New York thing? And this... My brother convinced me that that was the next best thing. <laughs> and you <laughs> told me that they were leather? Yeah, it was a leather batting helmet. It was A leather to... batting some, helmet. Some designer made it out of Philadelphia. And he said this was going to be the... And you thought you'd be like Eddie Griffin, where if you just wore the same change. hat? No, I was just going to change. Notice. Everybody was liking it a little bit. I thought it would catch on. Because I'm a voodoo child. I thought, I thought it was going to catch on, man. And what Oof, happened? Nothing. At what point did you bomb <laughs> for the nine millionth time with one of those leather hats and you just it's threw it into a puddle? nothing worse than bombing in that leather hat because it's sweating. <laughs> <laughs> it comes down a half hour later, just your head pouring with sweat. I no, missed those, those, those days, man. That was back when the Boston Comedy Club was, that was the most evil place It was great, though. Ever. You didn't have people like Joe DeRosa hanging around. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Dressing up for open mic night. Oh, uh, come on. What? You got better than that. You're right. You do. You're right. You, you did. Do. We were on a nice flow, and you just ended it. I know I did. As a you penalty, did. take you one of those stripes off your sleeve. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> if this was like one Harvey. of your stand-up gigs, this would be the time. You'd, you'd, it would be time to bring out, like, Steve Harvey. <laughs> all right, you guys ready for the show? Let's, <laughs> let's keep it going. Let's I didn't bring out... to warm you all up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Come on. Where you from? Where you from? All right. <laughs> my, I use the pickle line for all my opening shows when I open for people. What's the pickle line? Well, the pickle is like uh, you ever go to the store, and that's what you tell audience because they're like, "Who are you? Who the fuck is this guy?" You know, like they be sh- like a, one gig I did with Bernie Mac. They were chanting, they were all chanting, "Where's Bernie? Get the fuck off the stage!" I'm like, Whoa, "Jesus Christ!" Hold on, I'm the, I'm the. You know, if you ever go to the store, you go get yourself a turkey and cheese sandwich. Now on that sandwich, they put a pickle. On the side. Now on that sandwich, yeah. you tell us the black crowd. Yeah, they go, they go. <laughs> Come on, y'all. They start hearing it. I said, you go home, you open up, there's a, you open up, there's a pickle on the side. You ain't asked for that pickle, but you eat the pickle. You enjoy that pickle. I am the pickle on the side of your sandwich. <sighs> really? Yes. Must be a cultural thing, because I kind of lost it. <laughs> No, it's like I thought you were going to go the route where you say I'm the guy that brings the pickles, and if you don't listen to me, no more fucking pickles for anybody. That's give what me, I thought you were going to say. Give me some sort of something to break something over Joe's head. <laughs> no, if you go to the store, you know, as you were telling that story, I literally saw you flailing in front of this this imaginary crowd. No, no, now no. listen, listen to me, goddamn it. When you go to the store, there's a tomato. I mean, a pickle. Come on, man, let me finish. That's <laughs> onions. I'm going to be doing George or Ross Perot as Keith Robinson just then. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> 
Billy is that Ross like Ross Perot? Billy I can't, I can't, I can't do really impressions. Does. Billy looks like uh, redhead hey, Ross hey, Perot. Uh, <laughs> I gotta take that. I do. Uh, oh my god! <laughs> I'm just coming around yelling in your ear about nothing all the time. <laughs> Calm down, dude. <geez. laughs> I'm just waiting for him to peter up. No, I know, did. I know how to quit when I'm ahead. No, but that's what it was. You get a turkey and cheese sandwich. I said it wrong. Well, you go get yourself a turkey and well, cheese sandwich. Well, why don't sandwich. you say it right, Keith? All right, I'm going to say it right. You go to <laughs> the store. Have a little sympathy that's for what, a fucking see, listener. That's what Joe should say on this show. Hey, guys, I know y'all don't, y'all not here to no listen to me. No one should ever say it because it's not funny, I'm going to tell you why. It's great. <laughs> Stop pointing at me. Put your big fucking two-toned finger down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you, no, it's like you go get go to the store, get yourself a turkey and cheese sandwich. They wrap that up. You take it home. You open that sandwich. There's a pickle on the side. Hey, Joe, is telling the story again. I know. There's a pickle on the side. He just we got done. It. You didn't ask for that pickle. He just got but done. But you enjoy the pickle. He you just don't got call the store and curse them out. I'm the pickle on the side of your sandwich. He just got done saying to you, why would you repeat a joke? Exactly. I wasn't That's not a joke. He, he, that's something very... Your analogy? Just touch it. Exactly. It oh, did you me. just do that? I wasn't trying to be funny. I, I was just, I was just <laughs> trying, <laughs> trying to make a point. So, try try who, it one time. So what, what do you got? You got do, you, do you have anything to ha hype? Why don't you hype your room? <laughs> what, do you got, what do you got coming up? Well, what, what I have going... Well, for New Year's <laughs> Eve, Billy, I'm doing this. I only get 10 grand for this gig, but whatever. Wow, um, he's naming his price. <laughs> what are you, Jackie Gleason? <laughs> You fucking asshole. You know how many awful zip-ups you can buy with that money? And iron-on poker decals for your fucking T-shirts? That really looks like a bootleg no, sweatshirt. He made that himself. He made that T-shirt himself. He printed that out and ironed it onto his yeah. own fucking shirt. You got he it on a cereal that. box. I don't believe that you bought that. Where'd you buy that shirt? Where did I, what, did, what else do you think they were talking about? Where did you buy it? Macy's, dog. I'm running from Macy's. Don't call me dog. Where are you at on New Year's? Where for the love of God, Year's. talking to the mic, Keith. I, I'm in Orlando, Orlando, Florida. have been show Florida. business for 38 years. I'm in Orlando, Florida. Who dude. are you opening for? I'm not opening up for anybody. <laughs> I'm on, uh, <laughs> doing a little TV show on uh, New Year's Eve. What? A local Ooh, Orlando wow. show? Huh? What, are you a working at Disneyland? Orlando show? Are you yeah. the new Pluto? <laughs> <laughs> I'm on He's doing for Mickey Mouse. That's fucking noise. Nice. What TV show are you doing? Uh, well, it's for cable, Comcast. Comcast, you know about Comcast? Yeah, do you mean the local cable channel? No. That's 60, <laughs> 68 million viewership, stupid. Is this yeah, what they you know told what? you I'm to get? That. This is, what, this know is what the lie says? they told them to get to go to Atlanta, you know, Florida. Yeah, you know what does. else has 68 million viewers? Bollywood. Nobody gives a fuck, okay? <laughs> That's halfway Nobody's funny, Nobody's watching Bollywood. It's Stop all the way stuttering. Forward. Shut up. Listen to me. We're, That's where I'm at. I'm on New Comcast. Year's Eve. I'm making a lot of money. So Mona, what? Mona, where are you at on New Year's Eve? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Mona I want to prove this. Let's, come down let's go on to KeithRobinson.com. There's see no Keith Robinson. There's no Keith Robinson. There isn't. <laughs> so you can't even prove that this gig exists. Go to Comcast. Maybe huh? Comcast will have it on there. Their New Year's Eve. What do you mean maybe Eve they'll have it on there? They're giving I mean, you all that money. I mean, they show it on TV all the time. But whatever. Who cares if I'm on there all over and over again? Is it this... doesn't mean nothing that I'm making all this money on New Year's Eve. What does that mean? Where are you, Joe? Is this your special? I'm taking the night off and spending it with my lady. <laughs> Who takes the night off? What comedian you're takes wait, the night off? Wait. You're what? <laughs> I said I'm taking the no, night off and spending it with Wait a minute. Keith, 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 take it. We need to help him here. There's no reason no, to be mean. Honestly, I there's might no be reason. at the Cleveland Improv. There's no <laughs> reason to be mean. There's no reason. <laughs> Dude, they're, they're booked by now. I've been in this business long enough I know to know booked. that I know they're, they're already booked. booked. All right. I know they're booked. Wait a minute, Keith. No, I don't want to be mean to him right now. He needs help. Right, okay, right. he needs help. I don't Keith, need help. Keith, I mean, Joe, yes. New Year's Eve is the money night. No, I know. I've worked for, a million for, New Year's Eve a million for, times. Yeah, I know. And now you're going to spend it with, you're going to watch fireworks? No. What, happened was, what happened was I fucked up and didn't put a veil in anywhere until too late. And uh, I don't have any work on New Year's. Are you going to be in Times Square with 2008 glasses <laughs> no, on? No, 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 no. Pretending no, like but, you uh, want to be there? I might, I, might, I might do Cleveland if this other guy pulls out of it. Cause it Listen to the right words he's uh, using. <laughs> to describe. I might. I'm probably. No, no. Why maybe. don't you just say you got a private party, you fucking asshole? Because <laughs> I don't, and I don't feel how you the need to your, lie. Jesus, Joe. Conversion slippers. <laughs> how do you, how, how, I, I feel bad, man. Why, how, how do you forget to put a veils in for New Year's? I forgot. You could ask me to come down to Florida with you. I would have been there. I would have went down. I'm going to be in Florida already. I'm going to no, be sitting Joe, there. No, Joe. There's no money in that. 
They're going to give me the money. <laughs> I can have like anybody. No, dude, you fucking... thousand you, bucks for that week. Dude, one of these fucking upstate rooms. They, they would, yeah, they would have given you some money. I fucked up. And also, here's the, one of the reasons I fucked up is because I didn't have any representation because I'd left my management. And I, and in oh, the, my God. So where uh, are you going to go right. with your girl? In the booking period of Olive New Garden? Year's, I didn't have anybody calling for okay. making calls you, for you understand. what We know what the problem is. Joe, no one wanted you. Just, just, <laughs> just, 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 just simple. What are you doing? Because so you know what happened. Because what happened? Because if I didn't have representations, I would call a bunch of bookers like yeah. yourself. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I may well, have something me, for you. Yeah, let me headline your room on New Year's. <laughs> let me do it, dude. So what? Are you, you gonna stay home? What are you gonna do? No, I'm gonna go fucking hang out with friends or hang out with my girl. And where, where are you gonna go? Wow, to a party. Look or how nervous he is. He's standing up now. I can't believe it. I'm sweating. <laughs> he really is. So I honestly, I'm not even giving you shit. I feel really bad for you, man, because I that you know I know you don't have cable and everything, and that's <laughs> a, even, uh, she can't even watch bringing in the, the New Year's on his TV. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> He's gonna go buy a Dick Clark VHS. We'll just pretend it's 1985. We're gonna light a sparkler and set a stopwatch, and that's gonna have to be good enough, and then and that's it. Oh, yeah. God, wow, Joe. Joe is nervous as hell right now. Look, at I'm not. I'm sweating. There's like no animal. water in there, Joe. Put the cup down. Thank you. He's catching the shit that's falling off his forehead. <laughs> I'm sweating like a fucking animal right now. Well, Joe, well, we, 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 like we have Mike to do Tyson something about that. Bee, stupid. About what? You didn't just say that. I said, no, he just said he's sweating, blah, 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 so on and so on. So I just oh. said, why don't you just say that? Pay oh, oh I, I couldn't hear you. Well, no. you're fucking talking over no, everybody. I got nothing. Sorry. I got nothing. I, I, didn't have anybody, I didn't have anybody to do my booking during the period. I fucked up. How, I how can we help him? What can how we can do? We help? How can we, we get a... Joe? Joe, she, she at least be making fucking eight, nine hundred bucks somewhere. Get me no. a fucking feature for you in West Park. It's booked, dude. It's already booked. And you know what's funny about Joe? Kick him the fuck out. Joe, it's December 22nd. Okay? It's booked. Let me tell you what's funny about Joe. What's people are, <laughs> here's the thing. People are still calling me it. and asking for avails for New Year's Eve. So it's not over, Joe. It's not over. Well, Keith, when I've been in the business for 40 years, I would hope that I get a Joe, few phone calls from some local Connecticut rooms. You're not getting a call from anybody. On New Year's. We're trying to get you working. Joe, you, you should do one me. of those rooms. Oh, oh, you were saying I should do one of those rooms. I thought you were rubbing it in my face that nobody was calling me. That's exactly what I was doing, <laughs> stupid. But I'm just saying. <laughs> well, God damn it, I called it. Don't oh. you? Oh, uh, just Joe, let's just make Joe admit that no one wants him. That's the first thing. Hey, Why need... are you going mean? You're kicking him when he's down. No, I'm this not. Is, this is... I want him to be honest. Joe is in he's a pathetic situation. He's giving a shit that we situation. gave back when we didn't have work. That's the same excuses we have. Well, I'm just going to hang out with my girl. Come on. We can't let him get away with that. He's just sitting there lying to guys who's been in the business. He, know, he, knows, know, he knows he fucked up. I fucked up. So he, he admitted it. it. We, we should up. try to help him. No, Billy. This is why I'm not going to help him. Do you think him. I can't hear you if you're not pointing at me? <laughs> because you're, you're making me mad. Because I'm trying to tell you, you're letting him get away with his bullshit lines that he's getting away with. I'm not getting away. I said I fucked up. You didn't fuck up. Nobody Just say, nobody called me. Keith. Who I is going to say me. no one <laughs> called me? Who is going to call me, Keith? Why is he so mean? I know. He wants, he wants Keith, to Keith, say that you're the sidekick. Keith, he really Keith, doesn't like the you. The club's in the city. You mean Al Martin is booked up? Keith, the club's in the city. I wouldn't work there for New Year's. I, wouldn't I don't work like work how you put your hands, your, your hands up. Like Al Martin? <laughs> I'm not, look, I'm not, I'm not going to give up New Year's to make $100. It's like, I, I, if I'm going to make some ser good money, I'll do it. But it's like, I'm not there was no way. For people listening... To this shit, basically on New Year's, what you usually end up doing, you make double what you would have made, yes. even if yes. you if you're not famous, if you're not, because because the club's charging more. It's a big yeah. night to go out and comics clean up, man. At least in the city, if you work the city, you could yeah, make some I money. Yeah, I made a thousand dollars in the city doing thirty minutes. Oh, of the, you know how many here. months of cable that's gonna be, Joe? I mean, yeah. you, you you gotta put your veils in. <laughs> I fucked up. How did you? No, no, you no. blew it. You know what? You know what? I blew if he keeps the line, I'm going to call Wayne up right now and see that he turned Joe down. I talked to Wayne, and Wayne said to me, there Wayne you go. said to me, I thought you were somewhere else, and I wish you would have talked to me sooner because I would have put you on in a second. All right. That's enough of his lies. I swear to God, if he lies again, I'll just You know call. what? Start calling some bookers. You, you just need to stop lying. Give me Where? a gig. Give just me one of these gigs. You're getting phone calls. Say, look, I tried to call, and the guys was that where we don't want you right now. <laughs> we got other people to use. Just say that. Dude, how me... about the, the Lake Ontario Playhouse? <laughs> I used to do that gig back in the day. It was a good gig. You made some money. And Who is your feature in fucking Fort Lauderdale or wherever it is? Uh, Denny Live. I'm joking. I was just trying to pick I a Philly Danny. guy. I, I love Denny. He's fucking hilarious. 
fucking asshole requested me as a friend. And I hate when people I know request me as a friend. They don't have the decency to uh, send me an email to give me the what's up. Well, no, we're not. I'm not letting Joe off of this one. I'm sorry that Joe's going to try to bullshit his way through to comics that's been around. Who is and bullshitting? Notice you're bullshitting. I don't understand. You put a veils in, Joe. I want you to admit I put a veils in. I didn't in, put a veils in. I got in. no response. I put them in. Wait too a minute. Late. Wait. Okay, now I'm starting to feel Keith because why? Why wouldn't you put a veils in for New Year's? Because I forgot. And when I called the clubs and said, "Do you still have <laughs> listen to me? Listen to me. <laughs> Do you forget it. Forget veils on New Year's, New Year's Eve? I think this all is, calendars have no. the number one is painted differently, like." <laughs> So, uh, this is a special day that's coming put up. A in. You got to put a veils in in September. I forgot to do it. I called. Oh, no, I you called, don't. Shut up. I called clubs in late October and I said, Are you guys booked? And they said, Yeah, we are all booked for New Year's already. We already have our shows booked. Okay, A rooms are definitely going to be booked out that far. But I mean, everybody was booked. We're talking about city. Where else am I going to go? City, stupid. In the city. That's what I'm talking about. No, you're wrong, then. Nobody, wrong. nobody put a veils in in September. Bill, it, I mean, Bill, Keith. In November, they already had their posters up for who was playing at the club. No, they didn't. Yes, they did. Stand up, New York. But just this put is the their thing, though, up. Joe. You've been in the city. You just told me you you, you were over. He was overly yelling last night. I can just tell you. You've yeah, been in the I city know. for I've been a while. City for a while. Yes. And so I how, forgot, did, how did you miss that? I forgot to fucking do it. Dude, when do you it. call up, when you call the seller, SD will say like, yeah, "Okay, leave your veils for New Year's Eve." Year's Eve yeah. blah, blah, they don't. Well, look, the other clubs don't do that. They they don't say leave your veils for New Year's Eve. It's not excuses. Let me ask you a question, Keith. In your 39 years being in show business, have you ever have you ever forgot? No. New Year's Eve is a trouble date. That's the date that you think about working the most. Oh yeah, people have gotten divorces yeah, well, to work look, New I'm Year's Eve. I'm upset that I'm not working it, but what are you going to do? I fucked you don't up. seem that upset. You keep saying you fucked what up. Because what I fucked up? What are you going to do? How did you fuck up? Huh? Would you fuck up and call? <laughs> Would you left your name? That's how you fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Wow. Danny, we got to take a break coming up. <laughs> you, can, you can, you can. If you want to keep running with it, you can keep, keep running. Just because, uh, the hell's my fucking Timex watch here that I can't believe you didn't make fun of. How much more time do we have to fill up here? Obviously be editing uh, this out. Yeah, probably about, at this point, I would say about 25 minutes. 25 Jesus more Christ. minutes. 25 more minutes. Brutal, yeah. yeah, no, with no callers. It's fucking brutal. Uh, why, why, so why don't we, why don't we take a, uh, well, we don't need to take a break. I keep thinking we're fucking doing this live. All right, let's take a breather. At least, for a well, at least I, I can just throw it to break. You know what yeah, I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. Throw to break it, it. And that way, you know, I could just. All right, we got we got to take a break here. We're going to get to the bottom of uh, why Joe DeRosa is not working for New Year's. And anybody who's listening out there, we got a lot of truckers. If there's a truck stop out there I'm that you fucked. know, I need. I, that, I'm not. Yo, put put your oh, plea sorry. out. Put was, your plea out. Huh? Put your Please plea. Please hire me for New Year's th a week away from now. Yeah, Joe DeRosa, myspace.com slash Joe DeRosa. If you have like a private party, if someone you know actually has a birthday and it's on New Year's Eve, the 31st, why don't you book Joe and, and just give him some money, okay, man? He, he doesn't have cable. And, uh, I'll leave it or I'll serve hors d'oeuvres. Yeah. <laughs> it's 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 Christmas I'll pour time. The champagne before the toast. Why would Joe lie? I don't know. All right, you're listening to Uninformed, <laughs> Bill Burr and Joe DeRosa with our special guest Keith Robinson. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, <laughs> Kwanzaa. Oh my God! Oh Joe! <laughs> Joe! It's Uninformed with Bill Burr and Joe DeRosa. Bill Burr and Joe DeRosa with our special holiday guest, Mr. Keith Robinson. And uh, I actually, you know what, Keith, this was supposed to be, you know, interview with you, you know, talking about what you got going on and shit. That's what we usually do. But until we stumbled on the fact that Joe does not have a New Year's gig, we got to, mm -hmm. uh, we got, we got to, Joe, I'm serious, man. I know I break your balls, all the fucking drum and shit, but seriously, man, I want you working New Year's. So I was thinking during the break, man, what are, what are some obscure, I mean, first of all, you got to know improvs. They're gone. They're gone. Okay. But Funny bones. They're gone. Yeah. The fucking tree houses. Gone. Dangerfield, Linda Rowe gigs. Those are gone. Gone. Now. Yeah. Pickle man. What is pickle man? He knows who the pickle man is. Yeah. The pickle man is a, is a possibility. Maybe Solari. Should Paul we call Solari, Paul Solari always on the has air? a last minute opening. If you can call Solari for a hot seventy five bucks, you should call and see what the price is. Let's call Solari. You got his number. Yeah, I got his number. I'm gonna call call Paul Solari. You got a phone? We can call Paul. Get get Joe a gig. All right, hold on, hold on. 
Let's see if Joe can get himself a gig. I mean, this is like, I don't know, this is like a, uh, I, I can't even explain. This is like, this is like being home on Oscar night if you're an A-lister. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even have a tuxedo. Uh, I, 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 like, like, yeah, that's what it is. That's like an actor forgetting that the Oscars. Yeah. Oh, the Glo Golden Globes. But that means he's Shit. no advice. He's, he's lost call. his juice. Yeah. That's what it is. He's going to get I'm no finished. advice. I, got, I fucked up. I really fucked Stop up. Stop saying you fucked up like you were in control of it. All right, That's so pe people are just tuning in. Basically, Joe DeRosa is a stand-up comedian, and when in comedy, the big money night, when when you're struggling, coming on your way up is 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 New Year's New Year's Eve. You work, you get paid double what you normally get paid double. Everybody gets paid more because the you know crowds paying double and all that type of stuff. And uh, Joe DeRosa somehow uh, forgot to leave a veils on like his big money night. I don't know what the people listening <laughs> you gotta do, do for a living. But I know everybody's got their big. Because you got to do it in fucking September, and like I'm, I wasn't even thinking about. That's it. like music stores; they forget yeah. to have the big holiday music sale around Christmas. I was Christmas. just focused on the clubs I work at. Don't give you a reminder. They don't say, you know, some of them will invite you to do whoa, it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You need a yeah. friendly reminder that it's New Year's Eve? Look, in September, I was concentrated on trying to find new management representation. My mind wasn't on fucking New Year's Eve. So that's why. Can you, can you believe that? Well, it's this, absolutely uh, true. Dude, it's the, the fact that he's in this situation, I mean, I can't believe it, but I, I can, you know, just looking at his posture and stuff. I dumped my representation just... in August, and in September and October, I was having phone meetings and making planning a trip to go out to, to L.A. to sign with new representation. Okay, now, I got my New Year's Eve uh, gig uh, maybe six weeks ago. You did? Yes. Wait, now, where, where are you working? I'm working in Orlando, Florida. Oh, that's right. Yes. He brought it up. Keith Robinson, yeah, Orlando, for, uh, Florida, allegedly making ten thousand dollars on yes. AM radio. Now, that's really disgusting that you CNN just threw your eight. price out like that. He's doing a YouTube. Oh. Yeah, and he doesn't have a. First of all, why don't why don't you special. have a website? I don't know, man. You know, come on. Why do you Why do you hate? But you know Keith? why. You used to, didn't you? You actually. You know. know you know yeah, why? I, I, I know. I did, but I. You know. Oh, what? Because because. You didn't want to. You didn't want to maintain it. You didn't want people yeah, trashing I you. Just, no, it's just not my thing, man. You're the too websites. cool to hype yourself. Yes, I'm too. I'm not a. You know, I can't. Keith, do that. I got news for you. You're not too cool. Yes. Well, you may be right, but I'm just saying. <laughs> but I still, with all that, without what's the going website, on with you, Keith? Can I tell you something? Wait a minute. Let me just say this. Without my website, it's without anything, again. I still have a New Year's Eve game. Because you've been around for fifty no. fucking years. No. He's got a point. He's got a point. No, but you've been six. That's that's new blood. They usually like new blood. Yeah, for and new, new blood Eve. needs to put a veils in, and I forgot to do it because I was fucking why, worried about something else. Why do you believe that he he? he so wait a minute. So if you if you then you forgot. Can I tell you want? something? I actually think that forgetting it is worse than nobody wanted me. <laughs> I think it's worse. If nobody wanted you, that hurts. But, you know, eventually they're going to want you. Dude, when's the last time you had to remember in September to call a club about avails without No, no, dude, are you out of your mind? In August, in August, I call my booker and I, and I tell him before everything gets fucking booker. Before everything gets booked up. Okay, dude, back, back in the day. This is what I'm saying. No, Joe, back in the day, I, I, did, I made the call myself. And I'm still making the call because I make the call to my booker just because I don't call the club. I still go, hey, make sure you're on this before everything gets booked up. I, I fucked up like uh, a couple years ago where by the time I waited just to the end of August, I ended up playing fucking Detroit. Freezing cold, freezing my fucking ass up. I said to my girl, you want to come out to Detroit for New Year's? She's like, no. <laughs> yeah. So ever since then, I make sure like in the summertime, I call up and go, you know, book me down in Florida. Right. Look at you, you're in Orlando. Oh, Orlando. Hey, I'm, I'm down well, in Fort Lauderdale. See, that was, your, that was your wake up. I made a mistake. This is my wake no, up. No, but I my makeup, my, my wake up was, was working in a shitty place. I, I didn't just not get a gig. Not get a gig. And if he didn't even work in Detroit, he would have worked in the city. I never was in a situation like, well, maybe I'm going to go to Applebee's with my girl. You can't do that, Joe. <laughs> Can't do that. <laughs> well, what the fuck am I supposed to do? I made a mistake. I got nobody fucking covering this shit. Right, Joe, so, and the reason why we're harping on this is because I like you, John. I, I know what you mean this situation again. You have to know how bad you fucked up. You know, he's sometimes going, you, you need tough love. He's going to bring the New Year's in and Howard Johnson. <laughs> Jesus, I'm really getting fucking depressed, man. I didn't think it was that big of a deal. Uh, now you on should. New Year's. No, it, it, that's the thing. Do You have to know, dude. That's a fucking huge deal, man. You can make twice the money. I know guys that didn't work last year. They worked this year. But I mean, that is saying... Who? Who? Oh, oh, Okerson didn't work last Jesus year. Jesus Christ, Did you're he... basing your career on Big J Okerson? <laughs> Come on, man. Shoot higher, man. Shoot fucking higher. <laughs> I'm just saying, dude. You're, you're telling me... <laughs> Big J's hilarious, by the way. You're telling me when you were at my level in the game, when you were four, five, six years in, and you were, you were relatively new in this 
city compared to guys like you. You didn't have a New Year's where you didn't fucking work because <laughs> all the other spots went to guys that have been around for 10 or 12 fucking Thank years. Thank you. That's all I wanted him to say. That I didn't get no spots. Yeah. Just say I put in, but no one wanted me. I didn't me. put Let in, Let me see. No. Six years in was 98. Yeah, I was working. I worked all the way through. <laughs> Look, I worked You know when I didn't work, Joe? The first two years. Yes. I didn't work. I've worked every New Year since I've been in the city. The first two years. And made years. great money. I so fucked wait a up now, on this one. Here's how you know he's lying now. Let I'm me tell you how lying. he's lying. He has a history already. <laughs> not lying. He already told us his history. Uh, I've worked all these years, but this is the year you forgot? Uh, you had so much Keith. on your mind. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Here, here, here are some obscure comedy clubs that you might want to try to call. Maybe <laughs> they're not booked. We got uh, McGooby's Joke House in Baltimore. <laughs> Can we call them? <laughs> Can I call them? Here's, <laughs> Split a Gut, Bay City, Michigan. We got the numbers here, Joe. You got a totally bonkers. Can we call them? Wait, wait. <laughs> Maplewood, Minnesota. Jesus, you know, everybody Dude, there call them. is showing call that up. Call one in Maryland and see if they'll book me and tell them it's a fucking radio. See if they'll do it. We're on a radio show. Yeah. We're on the air. Maybe you heard Here's one. Guys. Seriously. Here's one. This is a nice part of the country, too. There's a place called Brew Ha Ha, Rapid City, South Dakota. Nice. Oh, Even I thought that Maryland was San Diego. One. Maryland one I saw is SP, close I thought enough. Was I can take a train. I don't have to We've got to get Joe there. booked. We've got to get Joe booked. That's, that's the focus of this uh, people out there, go to uh, uninformedradio.com. This is a live episode. Fuck. And this Uninformed falls radio. the Christmas spirit, though. If we can get Joe, it falls right into the whole Christmas spirit. You know thing. what? This is going to be. The, I'm going to get. Fuck the homeless. I'm not feeding, oh, no, I'm not feeding it, anybody. It, 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 We're getting Joe DeRosa a New Year's gig. Doug Sinye might have gotten me the gig in Cleveland. I'm serious. I'm gonna Joe, I'm right seriously. Now. I'm, I'm going to talk to my guy, and I'm, I'm going to get you some. I got to get you something. My guy dude. is your guy. Is there guy. a phone that goes over the air? Yeah, call it on the air so we can just hear, so everybody can hear. Joe trying to get Who's your guy? You mean your agent guy, not yeah. manager. All right. 917. Well, hang on. Don't give it out. Yeah, don't give it over the air. <laughs> Jesus Unprofessional Christ. Unprofessional well, jackass. It it's in, bad enough. In you post, bleep it out. Bleep it. <laughs> he bleeped it out. <laughs> Just. <laughs> oh. Jesus Christ, Joe. I thought you called Solari first. He got a voicemail. He called him. Oh, we got a voicemail. Solari would give me a hot $98. That's what we want to see. <laughs> That's what's funny oh, you'd about it. you'd love it, wouldn't you? And you know what, Joe? Sucker. That's 98 more than you're making right now, dude. <laughs> oh, God, Joe. Yeah, what about Jesus the emotional Christ. things you know, Joe? I will make that evening? And you know what this is? The, you're doing the comedy about. version of, like, when, when like... like oh, the, 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 It's not that bad. It is bad. It's this is a civilian. Bad. This is a civilian version of, like, like, right now we're doing, like, an intervention. Like, Joe, you have to move out. You have to pick a career. You got you to gotta, you gotta take <laughs> responsibility. <laughs> I don't know. I know guys that don't work on New Year's sometimes. I mean, it's I not... know, Joe, and, and, and what are they really? doing? Who are they? Who are they? I just huh? named one. Give me, yeah, give me somebody. Successful. Actually, last <laughs> New Year's, Jay did work. It was the New Year's before that he didn't work. Jay did right. work, yeah. But the Jay one works, before, I remember he makes he money, he and he goes work. out and he gets another star tattoo on his forearm. <laughs> I've seen Jay working. <laughs> don't drag Jay down. Yeah. Joe, so you're not working. Especially when he's not here to defend himself. Yeah. You know who else is not working probably? Most likely. No. You know who? Mike Vecchione is actually working on New Year's Eve. Know, Mike Vecchione is probably at an athlete's foot right now <laughs> looking at a new track suit <laughs> to wear on New Year's. No, he seems more like a, he's going to dress like. Oh, he's working and you're not working. Stupid, because I called Wayne too fucking late. Do you understand that? All right, that? you know what it is? Here we go. Do you understand it, that I called Wayne too late? All comics listening to this, we got to put Joe's <laughs> cell phone <laughs> on the internet. Everybody has to call Joe so he's not lonely on New Year's. <laughs> New Year's Eve, we're all going to call you up just to see what course you're on oh my God. at the Cheesecake Factory. I'll call Wayne up and confirm that you weren't too late. He just didn't want you. He had the flyers made by the time I fucking called him. Really? And he goes, I thought you were working somewhere else. So I would have loved to you use there. you. Those flyers are etched in stone. He's got his budget. The club hey, Keith, what would, happen if, what, what would happen if you called what would happen if you call Wayne right now? i call Wayne right now and find out He'll be What's in here in a few with? hours for the Black Phillips show. The who? Patrice's show. He's coming on for Patrice's show tonight. Oh. Call him. I don't give a fuck. Call him. What are you going to do? He's going to go, I would I would love to book Joe, but... Uh, <laughs> we All right. We're, we're, you know, we're, we're going to have to move on. We're, we're, we're going to have to move on. Oh, it's eat just, me. It's just... You don't want to hurt my... Uh, really? Really? Now's when you draw a line? Hey, you can, you tell, can you tell Joe to take the price tag off the bottom of his sneaker? <laughs> Shoot <there. laughs> Call that club, hey, uh, Danny. Super, <laughs> supermarket bin shoes. <laughs> D- Danny, call that club. You know what? Those shoes were one of those metal racks with those big, those big balls that kids buy. 
He has on Toys R Us loafers. <laughs> Joe, yeah. if you just take them off the console, that, that yeah. trashing would end. Hey, toys Danny. for tot shoes. Come on. Danny, call that club. <laughs> what club? The one you just went to call. What happened? Call, call, call. Oh, you called Doug. Doug. What laugh vault? What happened when you called Doug? Voicemail. Voicemail. All right, let's try this club. It's our last ditch effort. This uh, you know what, dude? We'll, 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 we'll try on, on this side. We'll try to get you a gig, Joe. But uh, we'll be we, fun we, to do this on the air. Uh, try to get the Booker on the phone on the air. Yeah, but then we got to deal with releases and all that type of shit. Whether they want, I mean, no, no comedy club. Why don't you just do wants... say he goes? You're being taped. It's a radio show. If she says yes, then all right, fuck it. Call uh, Mugu Guy Pans in, in fucking. <laughs> well, uh... be... Here's what I say: If we get if we get me booked on the air, it'll be the greatest fucking thing ever. So, okay, get Joe. But booked. you know what's funny is we're gonna end up getting a gig in like South Dakota. Which, from someone who's ever flown to South Dakota, I mean, you can oh. get a, you can get a, a plane ticket to France for cheaper because <laughs> no. nobody goes there. I know. And you're, you're going to try to fly all, on New Year's. Uh, really depressed. Yeah. I'm, I, Why don't yeah. we just look up Magoogies there and see who they got there? Go to I their website. Go, on his phone. Go, go to their website. Who? Paul. He called him already. He didn't pick up. Keith, I want I want to get into Keith though. Let's 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 talk to Keith a little bit yes, more. Sir. As as he he's going to look up uh, what's going on with Magoogie. Okay. So uh, we we we're talking during the break. Uh, uh, Joe was saying that you, you're you're starting to drink. I never known well, you to be a drinker. I, I, I'm drinking a little red wine for myself. Oh my god. <laughs> Who what, what's that? You got it? Who who's yeah. who's uh, working at uh, Magoo's? Uh, at Magoobie's Joke House on the big New Year's Eve show is Mark Unger, Seton Smith, who. It, coincidentally, uh, his credits include the Opie and Anthony radio show, because he was on once. <laughs> Why do I know Mark Unger? Do I know that name? Yeah, he's I know both. He's a New York guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Guy Paparella? So they're booked, Joe. Maybe you could do a guest spot. <laughs> <laughs> Solari's his only gig. Call Solari again, man. Dude, we they're, call they're, they're, they're all booked. Solari, no, Solari's, he'll make room for him. Okay. I'm not going to Philly for $100 on New Year's. You'll feel better about yourself. I'm not doing that. Yeah, you will. No, I won't. Let's see how much he offers first. He's not, you know he's not going to offer more than that. Let's see how much he I've offers. I've done sold out shows with him where I'm the only paid guy for 125 bucks. He's going, Joe, man, you're breaking my bank here. <laughs> <laughs> sold out <laughs> fucking shows. <laughs> we ain't going to give up no money. Call, I'm telling you, call Solari. Solari would be the best one. I won't go for a dime you, At least than... you can negotiate with Solari on it. You can negotiate I with would him. do it for 500 he, there's no fucking way he's going to do that. You're gonna he do probably didn't even have a show. What are you going to do for 500 You'll do it for 200 a buck 50 Lois, I go 350 That's the absolute He already want to. He are <laughs> from 350 on New Year's Eve is, is it like, that's like working for minimum wage. No, it's that's, not. That's, that's, that's what dude, you would that, get that, if you did two spots in the city. That's, that's sweatshop labor. That's what you would get if you did two spots in yeah, the city. Yeah, but you wouldn't just do two. You do, you do the yes, city you is, you do a the, bunch. This is what I'm trying to explain to you guys. How are you going to explain the city to us? The two of you are so yeah, arrogant it, because you haven't done it in so long. These fucking clubs all demand now that you just do their show in the city because they don't want you being publicized at other clubs. Which would indicate on some level that you're a draw, which you're not at this point. So, Bill, it's true, Bill. They, they, the clubs do not want you doing more than one. Uh, okay, well, maybe, club. maybe it is new. Maybe it's the new way it's they're true. doing it. But I'm just saying, we've already established it. The, he, he fucked up horrifically. Whether he forgot to call or, as you say, Keith, so meanly that nobody wanted him. <laughs> I'm trying to get into Keith's. Uh, we, I want to do an intervention before he becomes. I'm drinking red wine, man. Uh, it's you good for your heart. Red wine is good Yeah, one on. glass, not not downing an entire bottle. Seven glasses is not good. <laughs> you get a little tipsy on it? What do you like yes. when you're tipsy? Yeah, I want to, you know, I want to fight Because usually bit. people become cocksuckers when they drink, but you're already there sober, <laughs> so it's like, what? <laughs> Keith, what please don't write the last chapter of your career that you became a wino. Nah, I'm just last... picturing you with a brown paper bag. He's got a great wino body, too. No, That's I drink, he does. I, I, I drink, and, and uh, you know, the best of the restaurants, man. Five-star restaurants, I get the best wine. And you know it's good. Yeah, your best wine, really? Yes. Is it is is it the same quality as your DVD collection? Yes. You know, I caught him one time. He he had he he bought what women want on DVD. Oh, it's horrific. You and Jay do that both. You buy movies before you see them, and then you just have to own the shitty movie. Yeah, because I buy had a, you know you buy good fellas. You buy classic movies. You want, but you can't buy all when I when the DVDs was first popping out. I had a DVD addiction. 
So I would just get DVDs just to fill up a rack. When you get a okay, rack, you don't want to That's what we're getting rack. to. We're getting so to addiction you, here. It's so unlike you to squander money and waste it. <laughs> <laughs> and it like, I'm surprised. Oh, well, I'm see, surprised. the only reason I'm, 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 I'm afraid for Keith is I know Keith has, a I wouldn't say addictive, but an obsessive, compulsive. Like, he started buying DVDs, and he had to buy every goddamn DVD. Like, he could literally start his own fucking video store. You could. But you know why? Because I had a rack. I had a 500 DVD rack, and I only had eight DVDs on it. So I just the fact of saying, why did you buy? Why, yeah, why didn't you just buy like the little twenty one? Nah, but you know what? Because a... I couldn't stand looking at that empty space, so I just started. Why did you buy the empty, the big rack? Why didn't you just buy a, a hundred rack, hundred DVD rack? Then I was just went out and brought a hundred DVDs, and I knew exactly. I wanted more than a hundred DVDs. Is so this how you impress 500. your women? Yes, you they come like home that. and do you, do you like subtly like run your finger along the title? <laughs> <laughs> did you go by? <laughs> Nobody's impressed with DVD. You know what was a big loser in my house? What's that? My Miss Pac-Man uh, game. Not one woman looks at it. They don't pay it no attention. Oh, you bought the actual Dude, video game? Yeah, I thought it would be a big hit. Uh, they my don't friend's even pay got it any that. attention. My buddy's got that. Scott, the one we talked to on the show today, he's got that at his house. I love it, man. You love it, but I'm saying women, they pay no attention. Do you have no just Miss Pac-Man, or do you have like the multiple games? Nah, just Miss Pac-Man. Yeah, I think when women look at that, they just say, okay, here's a completely irresponsible person yeah. still <laughs> living out his adolescent I, years. I you? I thought it was going to be. Like, you thought women, that's, how <laughs> funny is that, that he thought that that was going to appeal to women? You, Keith? I thought it was going to kill. Keith, <laughs> what it cost? <laughs> what it cost? 1700 Seventeen hundred. Well, you could be you... making that on New Year's, <sighs> stupid. You if you've left the veils. Eight hundred bucks, dude. What are you doing? No, you couldn't. Yes, you can. My buddy got his for eleven, and it has multiple games on it. Okay. Wow, you got ripped off. There. I'm sorry. All right, I got ripped off, but you make yeah. money. It doesn't matter. Now. No, wait a minute. Why do you back... overpay for? Yeah, that was really discontinued video smart, games. Dude. Oh, it, it just annoyed me. I was. Oh. I'm just more annoyed that no, not one female has paid it any attention. That's what I'm more annoyed at. You know what? Keith does, he's always done well with the women, and it, it just amazes me that, like, someone who does so well would think that, like, one of his ways to get him in there is Miss Pac-Man. That's no, the one that's going like to get the it. panties to hit the floor, Keith? No, I thought, does anybody notice how yeah, Bill's well, sitting well, right well. now? <laughs> Has anybody noticed how Bill is sitting right now? <laughs> just, I like. I really am sitting like an asshole. In the therapist mode over there. I am because I'm. I'm, up I'm, to I'm, us, I'm, I'm concerned, dude. That, can you at least take that fucking price tag off the bottom of your shoe? What? I don't know what you're talking. Well, take you, it if off. you know what, if you had actually had fucking ankle joints, you could turn your foot a little bit and you'd see it. I have ankle. Let joints. me ask you this, Bill. What's the one <laughs> Obviously. thing in your apartment? <laughs> That you I went have out and got. I have... huh? The one thing in your apartment that you went out and got that you like, ah, this is what's this, you know. Oh my God. Do you know how many stupid things I bought that I thought, like, you know, I wouldn't, I never went like the lava lamp. <laughs> what did I have? I had, a, I actually had a couch that Bobby Kelly took off of the sidewalk. <sighs> okay. And I kept that. I moved to another apartment, kept it, and it was a little dingy, and I had a bedspread that I put over this green and white. <sighs> striped bedspread and i thought it, it it added warmth to the room because <laughs> there was some green in the rug and i actually had a girl I actually two days she was dating me for some reason she bought me like this blanket and i thought oh maybe she was cold when she was sleeping over and she actually was buying me a fucking slip cover <laughs> to hang over it was awful i never did like the cheesy never had the fucking bar thing yeah, I nothing. Never, ever bought anything. Like, you know what? You know. You know what I would great. do. This is what I would do to to fuck. If I was, I knew I was gonna bring a girl back. I would just make sure the place was clean. I made sure it was clean. I made sure there was no overhead lighting, so they get self conscious about their bodies or anything like that. I just made sure <laughs> it was clean and it was a sanitized place Dude, to do I, something I, I filthy. Keep, yeah, I keep the my that. I keep our apartment. <laughs> no, it's yours, man. You're Spick, renting it. Spick and span, dude. I fucking, I'm a maniac with that thing. Dude, you know f how far ahead of the game you are if you if you just walk in and you don't have like the fucking sweats, it, shitty oh, dude, clothes laying on the floor? Spotless, dude. Patty's like, what are you cleaning for? It's clean already. I'm like, nah, because I'm, I'm so anal about it. And it's like, I'm, I've always been that dude, way. Dude, I got to tell you something, too. That's one of the biggest turnoffs for me, for women, other than them just being a cunt, is if, if, they're, if they're messy. A oh, messy, messy female, oh. because it's like, come For on, man, you're supposed messy, to help me with that part of my life. Messy women are worse than messy guys, too. They're grosser. Oh, they are gross. I don't know what that is. Like, I went to, to one uh, yeah. girl's house in uh, San Francisco. She had mice traps all over the place. There's mouse traps all over. Just everywhere. Oh. It's just... I couldn't... Oh. I could barely walk. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I got a bad one for you. 
I, oh, we got to start wrapping up the show. Here, here's a real quick bad one. I hooked up with this girl, right? It's a gorgeous girl, real tall, just everything proportion. She had like this white on white panties, bras match. Then she had a uh, she had a thong, right? So I fucking you know did my thing in the living room before I took her into the bedroom. So all her clothes were kind of in a bunch. So the next day she's going to leave, and I'm handing her all this stuff, and I the white thong. She had a skid mark, dude. From <laughs> dude, I'm talking clit to asshole. It was fucking horrific. Uh, and like I picked it up uh, and I just continued to pass it to her. And I don't, I don't know if she thought she just played it off real quick, hoping I didn't see it. Put it on. What a fucking and pig. That that's disgusting. Hey man, we we you can always get caught on a bad day. I caught her on a bad day. Oh. No, fuck that, man. I don't ever have skid marks in my fucking underwear. I don't care. Well, it doesn't go all the way up is. to my balls. I mean, this thing was <laughs> no, literally I had like a skid marks when I was twelve, man. That's some nasty. <laughs> that shit. That really is a little kid thing. Yeah. Oh, and the fact that it was a female too, dude. I could never. And the whole th oh, I was just awful. I was just sitting there thinking. Females oh, like, oh, should shit. never have skid marks. Yeah, like I got ever. like hepatitis. We got we got how much time we got left here? Mere minutes. We have mere literally minutes. Mere oh. minutes coming up. So Keith Robinson is going to be what the the, uh, the oh, well, Comcast gig down yeah, in the uh, Comcast gig. Can uh, people buy tickets for that? I don't know. That's gone. You have no idea. No, nah, that's yeah, that's sold out. It's Keith Robinson. What you what, expect? You know what? You I'm not. You know something? Over? All the trashing he did at you. I don't think he has a New Year's gig. I don't think he does either. You first of all, we know I'm gonna have a gig. Let's let's be real. Who's your gig with? But it's not ten grand. It's not Who's in your Orlando. Gig with? That's a lot. It uh, is. Well, I'm gonna be at Fort Lauderdale. Who's your gig with? Hmm? Wait, first of all, let well, me actually I'm, hype a, a fucking gig that exists and you can find on the website. I'm going to be at uh, the Improv in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Go to BillBird.com, buy some tickets, please show up. We'll be working New Year's. Now, I, let's get back to Keith here. You're drinking red wine? I think you're yes. depressed because you're not working New Year's. I'm very, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm making a lot of money, man. I make a lot of money on all my gigs. I just did and a these winery These gigs that gig. you, you can't find? Oh, it's on, C go to CNN, CN8. CNN.com? Like CN8. Dot com. Uh, two of my really good friends in comedy have no gigs on New Year's. And I'm making good and, money. Uh, You'll you know, see, they start all promotions on. They've probably seen it already. Keith Robinson always works. You got a MySpace page. We yeah, I got a MySpace ain't, ain't shit on there. Nothing's on there. I don't work on that stuff. That's, you well, know. plug it, stupid. What? Plug it. Oh, all right. Uh, for all you folks out there, MySpace.com slash Keith Robinson. Come and request me as a friend because I don't have that many. All He's right. so bad. I won't at, talk back to you though. And, uh, I, I don't talk. He back He really to is like reverse Dane Cook, like as great as Dane in. is at doing that whole hyping thing. You, you're just terrible at it, Keith. I'll be at Stand Up New York the weekend of the 28th and 29th of uh, December. Come out to that, and I think I just might before be... they clear him out yes, for the New Year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh Joe. I might be down. I might be down with you in uh, in January in Dallas. I don't know if that's no. You're on that gig. You're not on it. I th I'm on it as long as it all makes sense. You know what I mean. Okay. All right. what, what do you mean? I'm on it. You know, like I'm on it. They, they got to give him the right amount of money. You know what he's saying? What's the right amount of money? Four fifty. Jesus Christ! The holidays. <laughs> you haven't been <laughs> hearing, <laughs> you haven't been hearing <laughs> the music. <laughs> really, is just mean. <laughs> All right, listen. Look, look, hey, Joe, don't go into a depressive funk about this. Just don't do it again, man. You got, you got to work fucking New Year's, and I'm, I'm not bullshitting, dude. I'm not being an asshole. I really feel bad. You're not fucking work. I'll, I'll try to call somebody. I'm trying to think of people I know. Phil Berliner, maybe he's still booking. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll call my manager on Monday and say, "Look, I fucked up. Is there anything you can get me on?" And he's got to be able to get you on something. Yeah, there's got to be an opening gig. So there's got to be something. There's got to be something. I'm, I'm, I'm betting he's gonna be working Fresno. <laughs> I'll host a Dave and Buster's. <laughs> now nah, he'll Dayton, be in Ohio. He's be at Bethlehem, PA. I'll go to Bethlehem. Yeah. That's Allentown. Yeah, Bethlehem. you know you're right because he can't travel. Ground. He definitely yeah. can't travel. It's All right. If anybody's though. in the tri-state area and maybe uh, they're having a, a baby shower, Joe DeRosa. Touch with me at myspace.com slash Joe DeRosa or Joseph underscore DeRosa at Yahoo. Yeah, and thanks to everybody who came out of Caroline's and saw Joe. This is going to be airing on the 22nd. You already saw Joe. It's hilarious. So if you got some sort of New Year's gig, for the love of God, get him. Uh, we'll be back again in January. Uninformed Bill Burr, Joe DeRosa. I want to thank our great guest. The happy and always lovable Keith Robinson. Yeah. Danny, Merry Christmas. Merry Thank Christmas you. to everybody. Merry Christmas. Hang all the mistletoes. That's the whole Christmas song. Oh, y'all funny as hell. Saturday Night Virus. All right. Well, that sucked. To hear the Opie and Anthony show five days a week, live on satellite radio, online on your phone or tablet, or even on demand, go to SiriusXM.com. 
Also, interact with the Opie and Anthony show on Twitter at Opie Radio, at Anthony Cumia, and at Jim Norton.